So hurry in and find your sound at Guitar Center. Well, good evening, everyone, and welcome to Macaloni's Mill Track Style Show here on the Distant Thunder Radio and Network. This is Macaloni. Uh, we have a really big shoe for you tonight, but first, let me introduce the posse. We're all in the same building, and this doesn't happen very often, but let's start off uh, with um, the very, very famous Juan Juan is here. Good evening, sir. How are you today? In the house. Well, we're in the same building, but we're going to be in the same wavelength. That's, right. That's the important thing. Right, right, exactly. And speaking of uh, otherworldly wavelengths, also joining us, we can hear his little fingers typing away. He's always working. They call him Coco on the streets, Commander Cobra, in the house. Good evening, gentlemen. This is the first time the Beatles have been back together in a while, right? Yeah, yeah. really. He missed the ghost, ghost one, ghost two. We have to talk about that, part two. That's right, yep. So, anyway, why am I being clipped there? Uh, what's that about there? Can you tell? Where? Uh, just, yeah, maybe maybe it's just, you could be thinking about the audio now, that you have a nice new, brand new gold microphone, and I don't. Yeah. I'll hook up. I'll hook up that microphone next time. Maybe. Okay. Microphone have, envy. I have so a really different is, microphone now. Is his that, bigger than yours, Mac? Is that the problem? Oh, my no, mic's no. bigger than your mm. mic. You know. Is it is it shinier? We don't even know, Mike. See you, Mike. See you, I'm being clipped there, one one. Oh yeah. Yeah. Anyway. Uh, who cares, right? Uh, so uh, one one is here, <laughs> and uh, the Coco is here. We have a, a very interesting show tonight. We have a really kind of cool lineup. We're going to be contacting very shortly. I hope. Um, Super fan Barbara With, who uh, is abroad, as they say. She's not. She's a woman. She's we not know abroad. That. I mean that she's right in uh, Europe. Over, over the pond. Over the puddle. We used to call it at the big corporation, and um, she's going to be calling in because she's been in where Paris, oh, the city of light, baby. That's right. For six weeks, doing all kinds of stuff. Did she yeah. go to a all new jazz show or something like that? Did you tell me that? No, uh, I dream it. let's ask her when we get okay. get her on if she's cool with it. They, they opened up an all nude restaurant a nude, about three oh, weeks no, ago thanks. in Paris. No, yeah, no. Yeah, 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 yeah. But you don't want to be eating around nude people. You just it's, don't want it. I don't get the concept for that reason. Yeah, I mean, it, they're not all going to be models. You know what I mean? Right. Even if they were. Yeah. Even if what's they were, the yeah. difference? I don't get that sex and food combination, man. <laughs> that does not uh, do it for me. It could be like you know, you talk about finger food. Oh, whoa, 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 come on. It gives it a whole new meaning. Okay. Cobra, are you into that? That that you know, covering chocolate on each other. No, I, I am not a Caligula fan. I like yeah. my food and my sexual pleasures separate. There you go. Okay. Well, uh, that's so frankly not like the, speaking, he's not like the whipped cream and strawberries. Yeah. Type, then, I don't it? know if I need. I've never met anyone who was <laughs> there. But anyway, so I like like melted ice cream on you know. Yeah. Uh, you know, out in out in you know Hollywood, I have talked to people who've gone to these parties where they're human tables. Okay. Yes. Yeah. Cocktail what? parties, and they'll have a woman n- yep. naked uh, on a on a table, and and you pick the food off of her naked body. Okay. Whoa. Yeah, yeah. That's a little freaky, man. That's a little too weird. And you can. Pick, and what's the point of you it? You pick the areas. Yeah. You, and there are certain foods in certain areas, and that's the ha ha factor. Oh, I'm gonna, you know. Yeah. Anyway, you know. It's, 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 <laughs> Maybe they're right. Maybe it is Sodom and Gomorrah. It's a whole new world. And no, it's not really all that new, and it's not that great of a world. It's just the same old insanity. Yeah, same old insanity. Anyway. So um, let me run down the the batting order here, and then we have to talk about the uh, ethereal incidents that we've uh, witnessed here. Okay, yeah. Okay. Uh, So anyway, we're going to be also talking to uh, Ross Shop tonight about Silbury Hill. He mentioned it in one of the shows a few months ago, and – uh, it's this this just crazy place in England. It, it's this, it's a huge mound, okay, the size of a pyramid, right? right. And it was put together, I don't know, three thousand BC or something. No way in the world the people who were living back then could have done this, but they did. Right. One of those things. Incredible. They didn't have bulldozers back then. Uh, no, no, they might have had bulls, but no dozers. <laughs> uh, Cindy Bailey Dove's calling in uh, with her drone report. With a question, I've I've been wanting to ask her for about two or three months since football started. You know, they, they don't let drones fly over uh, sporting events. Right. You know, I mean, you have that thing in the wires. It almost looks like a drone going back yep. and forth. Yep. Um, I get a feeling they're going to be doing away with that rule soon. Going to talk to her. Well, because we have the safety factor nailed down, right? Yeah, but the th- how about a ter- how about the terrorist factor? Well, to say nothing about the terrorist factor, you know, right? Um. Our good friend Merrill Fankhauser. Merrill Fankhauser is going to be calling in. He's the guy. He's our uh, surf king guitar hero out there in California. He wrote Wipeout, and he was um, nominated for a Grammy about three years ago. 
and uh, his his fans all around the world. He's one of the three years ago. So it's yeah. In what category? It was um, he was on a compilation of sixty oh, surf to yeah. Okay. yeah. But um, he um, he's an interesting guy. He Merrill Fankhauser, he, him, Dick Dale, and there was one other guy I can never remember his name. Started that whole kind of surf guitar yeah. sound, you know, yeah. that real California sound. Uh, the tornadoes. Tornadoes, were, yeah, right, yep, yep. And, Busting surfboards. Yeah, yep. And uh, uh, I think that's the opening song at Pulp Fiction. Oh, is it really? Yeah. Okay, well, right, Cobra. They roll credits in the front of the movie, and really, oh, <laughs> I never saw that. Yeah, it's great. It's a great too. The I re- <laughs> Pulp Fiction's a I great really, movie. No, it is. It, it, it is, is not. It's a terrible movie. My, uh, my really only contribution to that whole genre of that particular movie is i was in antarctica we were weathered in for three days we had three videotape machines mm. and we put it in order um it was a non-stop marathon of about 19 20 hours with two other pilots mm. and we would keep cutting the clips we argued you know which parts were, went in front got the whole thing put together watched it and it was absolutely horrible when you put it in sequence oh you're talking about pulp fiction I, I didn't know what you, you were talking about. Well, yeah, well, wait a minute. Hold on. Okay, start, uh, time out for a second. Okay, because I did start watching it once. And what is it? it hold out of order? It's oh, not, it's, you know what? Screw that. You know what? There were yeah. people. Oh, I went to film school one as you know. close to the end. Okay, that is so. It, it, in film school, they would have flunked you if you turned in a movie like that because it's just so. It, it's a bizarre structure. And, uh, it's just one I of those didn't movies. I get it at has, first, but. Okay. I, I've only seen half at once, so maybe I should go see it. I shouldn't talk. You know. It's fun. To, I think it's fun sometimes to see what the end point might be close to and how the hell do they get there. So, so it starts at the end and it, and it proceeds to the beginning? Yeah, it's it's not quite the end. It's when you finally watch the movie, Yeah, it's uh, it's close to it. Yeah, well, hmm. okay. I, I don't sequence, like him. It's a, like the last set sequence of the movie. Yeah, I was really wondering what the hell it was about. I, I think he's unbelievably overrated, that guy, Tarantino, and has put out a lot of crappy movies. I've enjoyed his stuff. Wow. Okay, we should have a movie off. Hey, how come my voice just changed? I don't know. I don't know. Did you just turn 13? It's mic you're using. Yeah. Hmm. Did it change? Did it, did it really change? Or you it, just it thought changed it changed from what yeah. I can hear. Okay. Switch and, and uh, Cupcake. Yeah, we're going to be calling him later on, too. Talking about Ouija boards and stuff like that. Um, I wish this was a TV show. <laughs> <laughs> what I just saw you do. Anyway. Um, and uh, yeah, so that's who's uh, that's the show tonight. We're going to be uh, hopefully getting hold of uh, Bob with very soon. Well, listen, let's very quickly update people on the ghost in the radio station. Okay, okay yeah, right. now this started about a month ago, and uh, we're in this new station, really nice new station with a great vibe in this place, WXEX in uh, Exeter, New Hampshire, right near. Yeah, we love the station. Yeah, it's Exeter in great incident. shape, but a good history. Great, show. yeah, yeah. It's just nice, nice vibes. When we the show for a second show here, one one and I were here, and about an hour into the show, he said to me, "Hey, who's that guy who walked by at the opening?" And I go, "What are you talking about?" And, and I like, waved to him too, and I'm like, you "Yeah," know, it's and like he went, I knew him or something. Boom, and and he looked familiar, but I didn't know. It's very hard. The setup here is hard to describe, but it would be very hard for someone to walk by without me seeing him. And we came in with the key. Came in with the, and the shut the lights. The place was on. empty. <laughs> Except us. Right, yeah. We have the key. Nobody else had the key to yeah, get in. Yeah, yeah, right. So we were Nobody like. that's an employee. And, and then we called, uh, you know, the Falcone Communications Empire the next day. And we were saying, hey, you know, who, who was walking through the station the other night? We thought it was Matt, who was a technician here. I said, no, Matt, no, Matt, no one from us, no one we know walked through. So anyway, so that's the ghost. Now here, two weeks ago, we're in the studio, Juan, Juan, and I, and uh, there's fluorescent lights and they haven't got to fixing them all yet, you know. So one yeah, of them the is one not over on. My head isn't so. Yeah, one right. over one. One's head is not on. And uh, we're in between segments. He was turning. He was trying to um, tighten a microphone onto the uh, mic stand here. Uh, and we were talking about the ghost. We just relived the ghost. Right. And he goes, <clears throat> uh, and it, you're trying to adjust your mic, and and you say, "I need more light for this." And the freaking light came on. Yeah, right exactly. Head, right? I was trying to thread the mic uh, <laughs> attachment back onto the boom. Right. And yeah. we were chatting about the ghost. We're yeah. going, yeah, when, when, you know, for the 80th time. And then you say. I wish I had some light. And then the freaking light. Let there be light. On. Boom. The thing. And, the, and then we both look at each other. We both went, F, and the light went out. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and that was it. Wow. That's a crazy. Now, get this. Pistol Pete, the chairman uh, of the board here, told me. Earlier today, 
that there was a gentleman who used to work here. His name was Bob. Okay, and mm-hmm. he ju- it worked here for years. Yep. Lived up the street, walked to work right. for decades. Okay, yep. he died, and oh. yes, so if, in the building, uh, we're not sure. I'm not sure about that, but it was close by. It was close by. So if there's a ghost roaming around, it might be Bob, Bob the ghost. Mm-hmm. Okay, did you describe? You know, I was trying to describe his look to you. Kind of tall, pretty, tall, kind of yeah, husky, husky, yeah, big guy, yeah, yeah, big guy, yeah, mm-hmm. big guy, yeah. Yeah, I wave to him as he's walking by. He waves back. Oh, wow! He wow. waves back, and you know, did you have face? You had eye to eye, face to face contact. Yeah, it wasn't playing. He looked at me. Yeah. Um, I can't find Mac, this. Guy. Mac was talking. I was listening, and then I see the guy walk by. Huh? Pretending to listen usually, but yeah. that's okay. That's in the story. So I don't understand how, and then it, how I could have missed it for one thing, and this, and then you told me like an hour and a half later. I said, who was that guy that walked by during the well, opening? I was trying to process where I've seen this well, guy the before. The other part that's disturbing about the uh, story with one one is you, neither one of you seem to care that the person never walked back past you. No, no. I, no. And you guys had the door open because you were the only two in. No, no, we had a lock. No, we, we were locked right, in. It was locked. We were locked in. Uh-huh. We were locked in. So, yeah, strange. Uh, and he, I thought he went out the back door because that. Well, he was, never walked back. As, that's as, right. As, as Coco said. He could have walked out yeah. the back door. And yeah. He, he shut off the lights on the way out. Well, that's what, and yeah. left okay. us in the dark. Right, yeah, huh. Except for the little studio light here. Well, <laughs> Bob the Ghost. And we didn't know where the light switch was. Yeah, right. Bob the Ghost. And that just make it even more exciting. Tonight there's a rabbit skunk <laughs> apparently, you know, yeah. circling the building. So we have to make sure we go out for a breath of fresh air. Watch your step. Watch your step. Anyway, so, uh, okay. So this is going to be uh, quite a show. Hopefully, we'll see. So why don't we take a commercial break now? And uh, we'll be back with our first fascinating segment, hopefully Barbara with, listening to Mac Maloney's Mill Track Style Show here on the Distant Thunder Radio Network. We'll be right back after this. Over the years, Air Force Major Hawk Hunter and his band of patriotic fighter pilots have fought tirelessly to reunite a fractured America, devastated by a Russian sneak attack. Now, returning from a mysterious space odyssey, Hunter finds a huge Russian army occupying New York City, ready to invade the rest of America. Buzzing through the city's skyscraper canyons in a tiny top-secret ghost plane and seeing the invader's massive weaponry for himself, Hawk realizes he's up against the greatest danger his homeland has ever faced. But equally alarming are reports claiming that Hawk's former girlfriend, Dominique, is living with the head of the Russian secret police in a Manhattan penthouse. Is she his prisoner, or is she something else? With the woman and the country he loves in dire peril, Hawk Hunter, the wingman, will apply all his aviation prowess to launch the most crucial battle for America yet, no matter what the risk. Filled with fast-paced action, a wide range of aircraft and military hardware, Battle for America brings back your favorite characters from earlier books in the Wingman series and delivers a riveting story that reveals new insight on America's most famous hero, the Wingman. That's Wingman 18, The Battle for America, On sale now at Amazon.com and available at your local bookstore. Hey, welcome back, everyone. Back to Lonnie's Mill Track Show here on the Distant Thunder Radio Network. In the studio with us tonight, the very famous one one is here. Hello, Mac. Where's your? Oh, you have your Patriots hat on. I do. You are happy? I am wicked happy. And how are you and Tom getting along? Everything? Uh, you know, I haven't been in contact with him for a week. Really? I'm, wow. Yeah, yeah. It's, you know, no love letter sent in no, a week? You know? it's, it's, it's the kind of relationship where we've uh, mellowed out to like a baseline goodness it, rather than like the overhyped okay. yes, right, yes, thing yeah. that usually I have going on. Helicopter love of fear. Right. kind of yeah, hovering yeah, over yeah. the person. Yeah, That's that right, gets a little right. stuffy. Okay. Well, I'm, uh, and, and Tom understands this okay? You, he sure does. Yeah, He's okay. Not, He's not jealous of me thinking I have, you know, another outside interest. Okay. Like, I don't know. All right. That's good. Sounds healthy. Aaron Thank Rogers you. or something. One, okay. That's an entirely different show, my friend. Um, <laughs> thanks for joining us uh, in the uh, studio tonight. It's Happy always, to be here. It, you always brighten up the room. Thank you. Except the light over you. <laughs> it is not working again. Yeah. That's a long story. I, I need to provide the, my own brightness. Yes. Speaking about that, you know, <clears throat> someone who does it 24-7. And gets very, um, you know, it's a pain in the neck at night, but he's always radiating Cobra. Right. Always in motion. Right. Commander Cobra, also in the house with us tonight. Good evening, gentlemen and lady. 
Wow. And uh, the lady that he speaks of uh, is a foreign correspondent, I guess we can call her now. It's our favorite fan, our biggest fan. Super fan. Super fan. That's right. Okay. I, I do we have, that's do we have a cape copyrighted. designed for her yet? Uh, yes, the whole outfit. Yeah. It's not just the cape, my friend. It's gonna, she's going to look like Batwoman did in um, the 60s. <laughs> with, a, with a leather. What's her name? Yeah. Ba, um, Michelle Pfeiffer? No, no. Oh, Eartha no, Kitt. no. Eartha Kitt. No. Sorry. She did Catwoman on that. Yeah, um, the original Batgirl on oh, the, Bat the TV Girl, show. Uh, her Kevin. name was uh, yeah. Vivian Vaughn, Vivian or something like that. Right? She was she was, she was was one of those girls back then, if yeah. you know what I mean. Perfect for the role. But we're talking about one of the girls these days, right now, super fan, Barbara With calling in from Gay Paris. They Gay call Paris, it. Yeah. yeah. How are you doing there tonight, Barbara? Did you mean Yvonne Craig? Yvonne Craig, all right. <laughs> <laughs> Leave it a Coleman. <laughs> Thank you, Coleman. There. there we go. Okay. What's that mean? Oh, jeans. Everything. She looks very nice. She looks very know, kind ravi- of French. Ravishing. Yeah. 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 Wow. She has a champagne glow. She has a champagne it, glow. It must, right? be, it, yep. it must be the cupcakes. It's the cupcakes. She's coming on later. Hey, listen. <laughs> <clears throat> what time is it over there now? We sound like real, you know. It's uh twelve fourteen in the morning. Oh, okay. It as, makes it start as getting. As Eric Clapton would say, things are just midnight. getting started in Paris. Yeah. I was just say. getting. I'm just got all dressed up to go out, but I've been in search of the perfect drink that has the most alcohol. The French make drinks with like ten kinds of alcohol in them. Oh man, they kind of champagne, amphi, am, amsis, amsis, no. amsis. Yeah. Yep. That has hallucinogenic qualities, you know. That's why it's banned in the U.S. I know, along with uh, agnostica, and then yeah. So that's my that's my mission tonight is to find the drink with the most number of kinds of alcohol in it. The most number of the most quantity number. of alcohol. What happened to just Jack and water? You know what I mean? I mean, would, would they know what well, I meant? This? You know, there's a lot of ways you could have gone. That one was not the way to. Oh, Jack and water. Okay, I'm sorry. <laughs> that was just. Yeah. Not- that's not cool, man. Not cool. Kind of filthy, that Coco. Yeah, well, talk, it wasn't me. I'm talk sorry. about consumption of alcohol and whatever. Yes. Okay, go ahead. Bob, are you there? I am. Okay. I was reading about three weeks ago that a restaurant that featured nude dining, nude dining, okay. had opened. I wonder if you had visited it. If you did, what did you have? And if, and also, we want pictures. Be careful. Yes, we want pictures. You but know, I didn't visit it, oh. and not because I didn't want to be seen naked, mm-hmm. oh because I'm I'm perfectly Pre- viewable. Absolutely. But I don't want to see the other naked people. Right. Yeah, well, that's well, that's the thing. Yeah. That's the downside. That's the thing. You don't know about their habits. Uh, yeah. Well, no. you you will though. It's, it's your crazy. dining next one. It's so, crazy. So what's the whole idea, though, of what what is dining naked? What's it? What, what do you get out of it? Do we know? Do uh, you, I don't know. Do you have to be French to understand? No. Is, you know, because it would just seem to me. I wouldn't be ordering finger food if I was in that restaurant. Oh wow! You know, that's for damn sure. Even though you had that one written down. <laughs> What is None the, of this uh, is scripted. How dare you? I don't. Uh... It's an interesting tie-in to the opening of the show, though. Right. When was that? What uh, did we say? <laughs> when you were talking about the serving on naked women. Yes. And now here we are talking about the French and finger food and naked dining in France with our downrange correspondent. Uh, it's amazing. You know, it's interesting. Paris is open season for just about anything. Is that true, That's though? Kind of, right. I mean, is it true? Is it is it as, as nutty as we think it is? It's nutty in a in a very Classy way. Yeah, hmm. right. Sophisticated way. It's not nutty like uh, New Orleans. <laughs> New Orleans, the murder capital, no. literally the murder capital of the country. Right. Not not, not as nutty. Yeah. Okay. All right. Interesting. Yeah. Doesn't a travel brochure, did you read that? You know? Well, you know, you can tell. It's, Paris. Everybody's like laid back in cafes, you mm-hmm. know, sipping either champagne or yeah. coffee or both. That's the European way of life, man. I just know someone who came back from Italy and he says, that's all they do over there. I got to figure out how to do it on my salary. That's all I'm doing. Yeah, it's just like, uh, what's going on? I don't know. Let's go get a glass of wine all day long. Just continue. Go get a glass of know? wine. You sing some songs yeah. at a jazz jam. Right. You eat a little food and then you go to sleep. Wow. Is there a lot of open mic? Jazz jams going on there, where you can just kind of be introduced yeah. and hop on. Yeah, nice. Wow. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I mean, there's some. Uh, 
you know, you always hear this kind of uh, romantic version of it. You know, anytime there's a movie in Paris, that's you know, Mid- it's a Midnight in Paris. I always right. think about that. Yeah, Speaking right. Speaking of it's a run- movie in Paris, yes. You know what's sweeping Paris now? Okay. The Disney uh, version of Commander Cobra's life story. Oh yeah, I saw that came out. <laughs> you know, <laughs> you know I, I listen. Everywhere I go. Coco, 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 Coco. people in the street. And he's a good guy or a bad guy? Right now, save 50 to 70% off at Banana Republic factory stores and online. And 60% off absolutely everything at Gap factory stores. Save even more with 40% off clearance at Gap factory stores. And at Banana Republic factory, sweaters start at $19.99 and scarves start at $9.99. Hurry! Search our store locator for your nearest Gap factory and Banana Republic factory store or shop us online. He's a bad guy. I, I don't even know. It just yeah. looks kind of like him, though. Huh. Okay. Disney. Oh, the- so what's the uh, rating uh, on this uh, film? It's a, it's <laughs> one, one and up. G. G. Yes, G. it's a very G rated. Uh... So, it's, so it's the whitewash version. Perhaps, of of Cobra. Whitewash. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Coco. Boy, I'll tell you. That name has uh, brought you some interesting uh, places there, Cook. It has. Okay. Um, so, uh, Barbara, um, any, um, I don't know, what's the downside of being in Paris? Is it is it expensive? Nothing. Is it expensive? I don't know. Right, is it, in, in, she doesn't know. Uh, what, I spent $63 on three drinks. <laughs> Well, it's a little that's expensive. better than what Mac did when he was down in New York. I don't so. understand what he's talking about. What do you mean? What do I mean? Didn't you go someplace and you're, I believe you're with one of your family members and you the, you got double billed by the bartender? That was actually in Salisbury, Massachusetts. And, oh, uh, sorry. <clears throat> we took care of that guy, by the way, but we cannot uh, talk about it. Yeah, let's, yeah, let's so anyway, let's do it. Coco a little mixed up. But listen, Barbara, so 63 bucks for three drinks, so it's an expensive place to visit. Well, that was one of the most expensive because it was a, uh, it was Le uh, Colliery de Lilas, yes, which is an ancient uh, restaurant in Paris. You know, Hemingway hung hung out there, all sorts of uh, history there. Mm-hmm. So I wanted to go there and drink in the history. And right. it cost me sixty three dollars. So, so is it is it as I imagine like you know, little as Ron said little cafes? Is people playing in the cafes, jazz, and all different kinds of things? Is it, is it is it the movie version of Paris? If you know what I mean. Well, if you know where to go, and I do. Yeah. Okay. Hmm. And and how, what's no. the, oh I'm sorry. What's the French attitude uh, towards Americans these days? You know, I find the French to be very very friendly. Wow. Hmm. Okay. Are you French? No. Oh, okay. What are you, if you don't mind us asking? Um, I'm Latvian Uh-oh. and Irish. Oh, wow. What a combination. What a combination. <laughs> Holy cow. Wow. Interesting. Okay, so we don't cross That's you ever. <laughs> ever. Um, well, listen, why don't we do this? Why don't we go to another break now? You what guys- happened is the Latvians invaded Mexico way back, and then, you know... Really? Did that really happen? Yeah, that's what, they the story. <laughs> <laughs> From Latvia to Mexico. Uh, Bob, stick around with us because we're going to have an interesting show. Okay. Okay. All right. And uh, hey, you're listening to Mac Maloney's Military Exiles show here on the Distant Thunder Radio Network. We'll be right back after this. Hey, welcome back to Mac Maloney's Military Exiles show here on the Distant Thunder Radio Network. This is Mac Maloney. We're in the uh, middle of a very big shoe here, but let me introduce the posse. i got a lot of people around. It's like a, uh, a squad, they'd say, yeah, we, in the uh, yep. military. Very famous Juan Juan is here. A rabble is here. Okay. I'm here. You would be the master sergeant. I That's think. right, of okay. the rabble. We already have a commander, so also went to the house with <laughs> us tonight. They call him Coco on the street. You know that? There's a movie out about his life called Coco. Commander I, can't, Cobra. I can't wait to see it. Commander Cobra is. Yes, thank you. Well, down the hall, under the same roof, but down the hall, okay, which is yeah. okay. And in also, my sniper position. Yes. Sniper position, is that yeah. what he said? Okay, yeah. all right, good. Well, he's the snake, you know. And he is the snake. He's ready to strike. Right. He's a snake, but he's also a wolf. It's a little. It's a good combo. You think so? Maybe yeah. a little bipolar. They'll no? both kill you in a heartbeat. Yeah, that's true. Also, speaking about heartbeats, calling in from Paris, our favorite yeah. fan, super fan, Bob with. Bonsoir. 
It's twelve thirty in the morning in Paris. Yeah, just starting, just starting to rev up over there, baby. Yeah. yeah. Wide awake. Hmm. Wow. Uh, so anyway, so um, we're uh, on the phone with us now is our security man club. This is his, uh, he reports in every few weeks. Just about the funny things people send us through the mail. About six months ago, our listenership uh, skyrocketed from about five thousand to about four hundred and fifty thousand. Right, something like that. So Almost a lot of a people, yeah, uh, just wound up sending us stuff, sending us emails, and so on. We're going gold. We'll go in platinum any minute. Now. Yes, right, exactly. And uh, we had to hire a security man for insurance reasons, and uh, he's on the phone with us. Uh, Club, how you doing there tonight, my friend? You know, I'm doing okay. How are you folks? Club, we're doing well, thank okay. you. Doing all right? That's good. So Happy what's what's the latest? Well, you know, where the security office continues to have to deal with a lot of uh, unique kind of issues here, you know, when it comes to what we call your fan mail. Okay. And um, there's one uh, rather disturbing letter that uh, we did receive this week, and I, and I do want to go over that with you uh, I think I'll start off, though, maybe with uh, just give you a little feel for what you've been getting, uh, mm -hmm. you know, in the last few days for fan mail for uh, not only Juan Juan, but <laughs> for, for the commander and also for you, Mac. Um, I think a, a little feel was the phrase of the night, isn't it? Yeah, it was disturbing. I wasn't afraid. It's just kind of disturbing what the club right. was talking about. You, well, well, go ahead, yeah. please, club. Well, uh, again, you know, uh, we, we try to do what we can with this stuff, mm -hmm. but... Uh, Okay. But first of all, uh, we I got to tell you that uh, Cobra is now uh, uh, starting to receive adult toys. Oh, uh, really? Okay. Yeah. So, item uh, number one. Not, okay. You know, right. I'm really not going to get into it much, but I'll just tell you. I opened it up, and it's very odd looking. It's from Monique, and I oh, don't know if you know Monique. Okay. But, all right. And she, I believe she could be in Paris. What was that name? Oh, really? Uh, uh, does that ring a bell with you there, Barbara, by any chance? Monique? Monique. I have not run into Monique. Okay. No. All right. Well, well anyway. For the record, neither has Commander Cobra. Okay. All right. Well, that's good. <laughs> good no. But is that a <laughs> Not yet, anyway. Is this Cobra? Cobra? Uh, that is that, negative. That's a negative. That's for Mr. Okay. Cobra. Please, uh, Club, continue. The story will come out soon. Well, the, the only thing I want to say, uh, this odd-looking uh device, toy, whatever you want to call it. It says, for a threesome fun. Oh, wow. Oh, so okay. I just, uh, huh. so that's a, no. all I'm going to say about that, Cobra. When you oh, you said enough. Really, <laughs> really have Interesting, enough. Uh, uh, Coco, uh, is that they Obviously, send... it can't be Paris, because it would have been from Menage a Trois, <laughs> well, and with our forward uh, <laughs> reporter downrange. That she might be somewhere on the box. <laughs> but, I mean, you know, it's, it's interesting. They send Coco something that three people can use, and they send you something that only one person can do. I know. Isn't that I'm, kind of kind of I'm kind of discouraged by that. Okay. That's okay, though. Don't well, you know, you, you just never know. You never know. It's right. But I'll tell you, uh, even, Mac, uh, you received uh, a letter, and it had a picture enclosed okay. Okay. Uh, with a yes. person with a very odd, she had a very odd pose. Her name is Gigi, G-E-E-G-E-E. -E. -E -E. Oh, is that it, it, any reference to his no. old company that he worked no. at many years no. back? Jeff? Well, is that where you worked at GEE? Uh, -E -G -E -E? It's uh, Jeff. It's uh, four fifty nine. Okay, until <laughs> that's when you can start the edit. Um, I, we well, can just uh, you know we I can look at that off here. Yeah, how's that? Unless yeah, by all means. How old is she? It, it really was unique. Well, all I can tell you is that she said uh, to Mac, my favorite author writer. Ooh. Okay. Mm -hmm. You can write on my. And I, I can't say anything anytime. Oh, really? Okay. So All right. She probably meant her tablet so or computer I just thought I'd let you guys know that you're not being left out. Okay. That, uh, apparently, the, this stuff is coming to everyone. It's a, it's a little bit of mental Viagra there for yeah, us. Yeah, it is. Okay. Go ahead, please. And batteries are included. Well, anyways, I, I think I'll get into the most disturbing one. And this is a uh, letter that came in to Juan Juan. Oh, Juan Juan. Wow. Who else? Um, are they in, capitalizing in, the J's in Juan Juan? That, they are. Really they are. That's, that's a good sign. Okay. I've seen different variations. Step in the right direction. Yeah, I was a little concerned about this letter. Initially, it's folded in half, and I had trouble. It was stuck. You know, it was stuck together. You know, it sort of reminded me of when I was in the military, you know, when we would go into the uh, latrine stall and for a seat. Oh, wait a minute. You'd oh, always find a Playboy uh, magazine, sure. and you want to get to the 
centerfold. Yes, right. And for some reason, the centerfold was always stuck. You know, that's from you know that's from the humidity. You never know where that's from. But thanks for that exactly. walk down memory lane, there, Club. That's interesting. At my boot camp, the centerfold would be missing. Missing, yeah, wouldn't be there at all. Scotch yeah. tape on okay. somebody. That's the difference between the Army and the Navy. And then General well, Patton would come to in. say, you know, after reading this, I and uh, that. I, I have uh, decided that I'm wearing uh, rubber gloves for these okay. kind of things. I'm going to finally put on the rubber gloves, okay? This must yeah. be excellent, please. But let me read this to you. And, and again, you have to understand in, in the security end of this, we have to be very careful about what we say because of the FCC rules. Okay. So I have had to, uh, you might say, redact, remove some of the uh, words in here. But okay. if you've got time now, I'll read this sure. to you. Yeah, yeah okay. All right. It's to Dearest One One. I have been listening to you for two years mm. on all six networks, and I want you to know that I'm in love with you. Oh, baby. Okay. Well, this... okay. Go uh, on. I love your voice, your looks, and your charm. Mm. This was the one Every... line, correct? Yeah. Yep. Every time I hear Max say the very famous One One is here, I usually uh, blank, and you can fill in the blank. Oh, I'll fill in the blank. All over the place. (laughs) Wow. What a mess. You're pulling my leg club. This isn't happening. My cat hates it when it happens. Somebody's leg is getting pulled, that's for sure. (laughs) But my dogs like it a lot. LOL, exclamation point. (laughs) I know it's, it's, uh, but I will continue. I've been asked to. So uh, I dream about you almost every night. Mm. In my dreams, you always. Blank me mm-hmm. in my blank. Mm. That opens it up for discussion. Yeah, okay. So is this typed or a <laughs> yeah, in cursive? Written in blood? No, this is, this is typed, and as I mentioned, it was kind of stuck together, so I'm having a little trouble reading it, okay. but I've been able to. All right. Uh, All right. Well, I'll, let me continue. Um, it feels so good. Have you ever blank a blank? I uh. have many times, but sometimes it hurts my hand. L O L exclamation point. <laughs> well, I'll continue. Uh, well, I know you're busy, so I'll make this short for now. I just wanted to let you know that I am fan numero uno. In Spanish. And come and come blank with me sometime. I'm the one oh. who sent you the blank in the blank. Oh. That's wow. the pink one with the long yellow cord. Oh, that's right. We talked about that one. And I also sent you the big black blank. <laughs> and how long was it? I I blank and blank, and now I'm going to send this in blank. <laughs> I'll be mailing you a Christmas present soon. Oh, boy. I will be blank I but that. blank, I promise. Love and kisses, Pat. Oh, a non-descriptive uh, name. I just thought of the Pat character on Sunday Night Live. Yeah, whose father or, or, or whose parent is Fran? Yeah, perfect. I never know what is that. I never watched that show. That's okay. We'll, you don't. We'll, we'll talk about it later. All right. Okay, Pat. Pat. Well, anyway, right, that's okay. the. I can now take my gloves off because I put that. Wow, hey, huh? Matt, turn the air that. conditioner on, will you? Yeah. <laughs> Listen, well, well, why, why you? I don't. I, I, don't... I don't know. I'm not doing anything. I'm just. Talking here, yeah. So it's your personality, then. Right? I believe it goes back to his metrosexuality, which was declared <laughs> well, on this show that was last year. Well, I am, two years ago. I am half Italian. Yeah, so that was I, so last year. What do you mean half Italian? Half you, Italian. Did, we did, did we talk about this last week? I, we I, always I, talk about it. You're half Italian, but yes. you're also half of something else, right? Filipino. Okay, I, I didn't think the other half was. Uh, Italian, yeah, the, the, really? Oh, I know. The right half is Italian. Because you were in Charleston, and there were no Italians. <laughs> <laughs> now it's well, I am part out. Irish. That's why we're okay. Oh, really? Well, well, what are you? Three halves? What are I'm, you? You I'm, half? I'm playing it know? safe with okay. my ethnicity. Good thinking. In those streets, that's wise. That's okay. right. Never got beat up. Uh, Barbara, uh, never really never. in Charleston. Nope. No, really? Wow. You must have been able to run and jump over fences, right? I was always on the fence. Yeah, yeah. we were like Olympic jumpers when we were like nine years old. We get chased every day. Hey, Bob. Right. Bob from uh, from Commander Cobra? Yes, uh, club. Yeah. Yes, Barbara. What is your reaction to this letter, Barbara, from a professional as well as a woman's view? Well, I can understand the attraction. I'm curious to know if this is maybe a transsexual. 
really? You know, kind of and that is our word on that. Oh, just what I needed to hear. Obviously, Bauer is not spending a lot of time on the verbal poor play. Wow. Like okay. All right. So uh, Can we put, let's I mean, put a better spin on it. Than well, we that. have a we have a back together. That's not a girl thing. Oh, okay. All right. <laughs> I heard the I, I heard just the tail end of that, but you know that's all you had to hear. <laughs> so listen, we have an expert with us. Club, uh, can you tell who you know? Was it a you know a male or a female who wrote the letter? Can you tell? No, you know I I really I really can't do that. And and again, I have to be concerned about uh, the FCC. So I <laughs> I've got to be very limited in be what I can more than that. you over the. Uh, so let me try to understand this club. You're willing to take a bullet, but not take on the FCC for us. That's, that's beautiful. Man. Okay, that's, that's beautiful. all right. That's okay. You know. Well, as I told you in a previous week, you know I, I really deserve combat pay. Okay, this, once this again with the money, they have one one. Okay. Yeah. Um. So, okay. Okay, wow, wow. Juan Juan is showing me a bullet. <laughs> he has just shown me a fifty caliber bullet. I already took a bullet. That he, I was told it's a thirty odd six. Is that? that uh, yeah, I don't know. Let me, Let me see. Okay. All right. Wow. What's this? A cigarette light or something? No, it's a keychain. Keychain. Uh, thirty. Yeah, about thirty millimeter. I'd say because a fifty yeah. millimeter is. That's you know. what the guy who was. Okay. The Vietnam vet gave me. All right. Oh really? That's yeah. What said, yeah. Oh really? Okay. One, right. one of my clients. You know, I think. Uh, you would you would call that phallic? Would you call a bullet phallic? Yeah. Yeah, okay. Life with a bullet. Life with a bullet. Yeah. Huh. Well. Wow. Okay. It's cool, Barbara. It's a huge bullet. So in other words, what we mean is <laughs> not only do we have guns here, but we have ammunition, which is uh, a little uh, disconcerting. But anyway, well, Club, uh, listen. Thanks for joining us, and um, you know, and thank you for doing something that we don't have to do. <laughs> right. Yeah, I guess somebody has to do the dirty work here at the security office. But, right, uh, right. We're here for it. Yep. Yeah, okay. All right, and listen, we'll work on that pay raise, okay? We'll ask Pistol Pete about really that. really appreciate it. Okay, he's overseas. He's coming he's, back in he's, May. So. Mac, he's worth every penny. I agree. Yeah, I agree. And um, and for the Christmas show, you're going to bring everything up. Is that in, that the, uh, in a big box or something? On a sleigh? Yeah, the, the I was looking. Uh, I, I'm going to get one of those uh, U-Haul vans. Uh, oh, yeah, I think I'm going to need it. <laughs> okay. But it's right. cheap, so it's only going to cost you, I think, nineteen ninety five. Okay. Oh, good. All right. That's good. All right. You know, if, if you it, act now. If it goes up to a rider truck, let us know, okay? So we might have we to will. you know, look at the money a little bit. Hey, Club, thank you very much for joining us. We should yes, give Club. Club a round of applause. Oh, thank you. You made me so very happy. For literally doing the dirty work. And um, we will talk to you soon, my friend, okay? Okay, sir. Thank Bye. you. Thank you, Club. Thank you, Club. Okay. Well, you know, have a good evening. Uh, these, I guess, are the uh, the, oh the pitfalls of uh, celebrity or something. I right? guess okay. this is what they all talk about. Yeah, too freaking charming. That's all it is. You when know? we got into this gig, they asked us, and know, people like, said that when you, they listen to your voice, okay, it comes, it's very smooth and kind of calming. People mm. have told me that. You know, it's very calming mm. for some reason. You know, do you agree? That's what I've been told. Okay. I, I've had been told that. Is it down, Bob? Yeah. 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 But you've met him. It is. <laughs> you know, and he's, he's not I that. I yeah. met him. It's very calming. You, yeah, he's, his voice is calming. I don't think he's a calming person, though. Oh, yeah. You? you are, yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah you're real scented kind I've of got, scented. I've got a good balance of estrogen going on here. <laughs> okay. So that Metrosexual. Per- that's yeah. right. That, I mean, it just skyrocketed the I'm last just, few years. I'm just, I'm just glad Club wasn't here to hear that. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, really? You've got yeah, estrogen running through your body? It's yeah. true. Yeah. Huh. Okay. Well. Yeah. You know, explains a lot of things, but another and show. And I've been watching nothing but PBS rather than ACDC oh, wow. concerts on really? AXS. Me ask something. Are you eating fat-free cookies? <laughs> avocado <laughs> chips. Okay, that's it. All right. Avocado Get chips. On. We need it. We need it. I take the avocado, <laughs> slice it, and put it in the, uh, okay. the little oven. Just like TB. See, this goes back to how you're you're kind of uh, pulling away from TB. I'm seeing this now, you know. I, I have to have a, the estrogen. A, a bigger overview of what's going on with TB. <laughs> okay. A bigger ovary or overview? No, he oh, said overview. Yeah. It's that yeah. book. The it's book. That Tom it's, Brady a, book. it's the book. I should have brought it in. It's, the, the it, yeah. TB12 Performance he usually, Method. He usually brings it every week <laughs> and makes us read it. So, you know, you know, it's like pornography to him, you know? Okay. It's Brady porn, is what it is. Brady porn. Okay. BP. All right. So, listen, that's good. I'm glad. I think this is a healthy exchange. But, like I say, if it goes off the reel a little bit more, we're looking at an intervention, which would be an excellent show, by the way. So, all right. So, why don't we uh, take a break now? Stay with us, Barbara, from Paris, okay? And uh, you're listening to Mac Malloy's Military Excel Show here on the Disney Thunder Radio Network. We'll be right back after this. Welcome back, everyone, to Mac Malloy's Military Excel Show here on the Disney Thunder Radio Network. This is Mac Malloy. We're in the middle of a very big shoe. We have a lot of people with us tonight. The more the merrier. The very famous one is here. Yes, sir. How's it going so far? 
So far, it's going, you know, okay, though Good. we had some disturbing, not disturbing, but let's say interesting uh, love letters have come across the transom from for you. From club man. From yeah. the club. So, I don't know. You're going to have to listen to the previous segment. Or you've already heard it, but between breaks, I <laughs> really get a little disturbing. Yeah, you know it's disturbing. Mean? Okay. But, you know, hey, it's the, fun, but disturbing. The Beatles get all kinds of stuff. Any celebrity gets all kinds of stuff. Yeah, they have to live with it. Okay. And that's why the insurance comes in. You have to, you need someone like club, but I just never thought it would be us. You know, I always thought it was uh, superfluous, but now right. I see. And also, the I big the, the big reveal, benefit. other than this, you know, kind of filthy letter someone sent you, is that uh, Cobra Coco is now getting adult toys. Yeah, that's disturbing <laughs> yeah. enough. Yeah, I know. So for guess, uh, apparently for three v one engagement. Yeah. Right. Yeah. For three. Why would they think? <laughs> Right now, save 50 to 70% off at Banana Republic factory stores and online. And 60% off absolutely everything at Gap factory stores. Save even more with 40% off clearance at Gap factory stores. And at Banana Republic factory, sweaters start at $19.99 and scarves start at $9.99. Hurry! Search our store locator for your nearest Gap factory and Banana Republic factory store or shop us online. He could set that up and not us. He's the great Cobra. Yeah. Okay. All right. You think he can pull it off? I, well, maybe he does. You know, I feel a little diminished. By pulling it off? Yeah. Anyway. <laughs> we shouldn't be speaking like that in front of a, a guest. One of our favorite guests on the show is on the line with us from Arkansas. Sorry for the dirty talk there. Cindy Bailey Dove, how are you doing tonight? I'm doing fine. Yep. Um, I was just listening to you guys. <laughs> Uh-oh. Is that yeah. a good laugh or okay. a good disgusting laugh? No, I was just laughing. It's not. Okay. I've heard a lot worse, believe me. Well, listen, you know, uh, <laughs> back in the That's day, good to know. back in the day when we were doing the show in the early days, I, you know, got quite familiar with Cindy. And now I'm sure I'd be up there with Harvey Weinstein. You know what I mean? Oh. <laughs> oh. You know? Right? You had no, to mention that. No, no, you sure? no. You know we're in his. No, in the no? ballpark of him. Okay. okay, all right. I don't. And, and for the record, uh, Cindy, you do not know Mr. Weinstein just for the legal issues that <laughs> yes, when right. his name comes up. Uh, yes, we I may do be not involved. Know. In. Just right. what I read on the. Uh, thank you. Just what I've seen on the media. See, here's the thing: is that so, you yeah. know, we, I don't want to go on and on about this, but what they're catching all these guys doing, okay, this Harvey Weinstein and allegedly Charlie Rose and you know all these guys, what they're doing is they're not doing in if there can be a traditional way of sexually harassing a woman but they're taking all their clothes off and parading around in front of them and then having a party with themselves this is this is what the power elite right. are doing this is what turns them on i don't get it i'm waiting for the movie to come out well, yeah but what does that do what the, is there any girl in the world who would go wow that's hot you know every no matter who they no, are they're they gonna wouldn't. say it's disgusting it's, Isn't there a series yeah, like no. that on TV called The Girlfriend or something? On The Girlfriend Experience? Yeah, The Girlfriend Experience. I just found that the other night. Oh, fuck. Yeah, it's, been, it's been on for a while. Wow. Yeah. It's well done. It's I watched that the other night, and I said, I can't believe this is on TV. It's But it's very well done. It it's is. filthy sex well done, you know? Yeah. That's crazy, man. Anyway. Sex so for it's C- Mac sex for CEOs. triple X files. <laughs> Got it. Okay. Girlfriends for CEOs. Mac, yeah, yeah, Mac after Doc. Okay. Um, so, Cindy, listen, you know, you are a drone expert, and, you know, you've been with us you know, for years. We're counting your expertise because you were way ahead of the curve telling people that, you know, you were seeing you know, a lot of UFO sightings in the 40s, 50s, 60s, no matter how dramatic they were. We just have to fax effects. A lot of them were probably drones. We didn't make a whole kind of... Uh, you know, big deal out of drones back then. A lot of them were secret. Um, you hear more about them now than ever before, but they were flying around and people would see them fly overhead and they would think, well, that's not an airplane, therefore it must be a UFO. So drones have been with us for a long time. But there's this ruling now. We were watching the football game the other day and we saw this camera go over and it's, in, it's on wires. It's on this kind of complicated wire system, but it basically floats over the field. Now, you had told us a long time ago that it's illegal, right, to put a drone over a sporting event. Is that right? Yes, it is. Okay. And that's for a safety factor? Yes. One of the rules on drones is you can't fly it over people, a stadium or anything like that. Or, you know, it's a crowded city. You can't fly it on the sidewalk. Mm-hmm. Okay. It, but yes, is that because it would crash? Reasons. Because because the drone crashes? Well, 
not only that, I mean, you could have a terrorist put a mm-hmm. small bomb on one of these. You could have someone drop um, a chemical weapon right. into the. See, that's what I thought it was. I thought it was. Bar. I thought yeah, it was like so the terrorist they thing, to not really just the. Be watching yeah. that, yes, because okay. that unfortunately they have to watch that now. Okay, well so, then uh, they're going to change it. Is uh, supposedly in the rumor mill. They're going to allow it to what? They're going to allow these kind of large drones to fly over NFL stadiums, college football stadiums. So you I have don't this... uh, mean to be uh, exceedingly mean here, but uh, with the diminished uh, capacity in most of those stadiums, maybe it's not an issue anymore. Oh, you mean now uh, people not going to the games because the NFL? Yeah, I mean they're yeah. talking all. It's all I read is how yep. less people are showing up each week. Maybe this yep. is the time they can get it in and get it approved, and then when things pop, turn around. Well, it's right, yeah, place. they're losing a lot of money. You know, uh, the company I was ta- trying to remember the name two weeks ago is Papa John's. Yeah, you, know, you cannot watch an NFL game unless Papa John Pizza is advertised. Right, he's going to stop pulling his ads. That's how yeah. bad the ratings yeah, are. He's really invested heavily in NFL. Yeah, so. If he's if he's getting cold feet, then boy, those the, the 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 ratings must be plunging. But the thing is, is you know we're Patriots fans, all right? So we're going to watch the Patriots no matter when they play, right. okay? But why would we? I'll give a rest behind about Papa John's. But- and, and, and why would we watch Oakland play the Bears? You know what I mean? Why why would you even have that game on TV? Who's who's going to watch that? I don't know, but you know they they pre plan it a year in advance. Yeah, right. And they figure, hey, maybe the so, teams will be good. Who knows? Yeah. Know, so, so Cindy, okay, so so this rule which they're thinking of doing away with now is, yeah, I always thought it was I, for some reason I thought it was always terrorist related, but I suppose if a drone went into the crowd, people would get hurt, you know, but. If the thing right. is carrying a bomb, that's going to hurt a lot more yeah. people. They're going to give the sports channels, uh, what do you call it, exemption to this. Mm-hmm. So they can, can't actually, because, you know, the, all, the regular news has a, has a drone. They all have them. Mm-hmm. Okay. Uh, so, yeah, I mean, you're going <clears> to <throat> see them using the larger drones, but it's going to be for just to play, the, you know, different, to see different. Like uh, angles, and things right? Like that, yeah. The way that so, this yeah, thing, there's a lot of extensions to these things. Mm-hmm. Uh, right. You know, especially when it comes to making a book. Right. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, this was described as kind of a really good size uh, drone that would kind of hover uh-huh. over 50, the 50 yard line and have all kinds of camera angles and so on. And right, that's exactly what they're going to do. Right. You know, yeah, just be hovering. They've already there. exempted, um, like I said, all the other news. So you, that's what you see now. When they're showing this aerial footage, right. it's drone. It's not a helicopter anymore. Right. Yeah. Yeah. And so if uh, a drone hits you in the head, well, you hit, a, well, it's going to be something on the ticket. If you get hit by the drone, you've you've given up your rights. Yeah. To I don't know if those kinds of uh, exemptions are enforceable in a situation. Go, like go that. to a baseball game and read those. I know they all say that, yeah. but it doesn't you can probably get over right. it. You know. Yeah. Right. So and then one other thing. No, so if you get you, hit with a drone, you can sue. You can't I mean, absolve yourself happen, of liability yeah. just by saying that's true. It's I on buy the ticket. ticket. Right. Uh, another right, thing I saw, right. Cindy, was uh, that um, uh, Amazon and now, I guess, I want to say Yahoo, but it must be somebody, oh, Google, okay? They have now um, <clears throat> got a clearance, flight clearance for an air car, okay? Yep. An air car, just right. like Jetsons, okay? Now, two of these companies, and you know that, you know that uh, Amazon wouldn't, you know, uh, get involved with it if it wasn't going to be some massive freaking success, okay? So... We're going to have air cars soon. I mean, what's that going to be like? We asked this question. Pilotless air cars, right? Say that again, please. Pilotless air cars. Pilotless air cars. Yeah, Yeah, like um, Uber already has one. Uber already is working on an air car. And now this is, that's what it is. And now Amazon's going to do one. But but my question is, and I should throw this to Cobra, actually. How are they going to stay out of each other's way, Cobra? I mean, is it all going to be reliant on computer avoidance? Right, yeah. They're going to do the pilotless, which I, I think is not going to go nearly as well as these projections are coming out. Mm-hmm. Um, all the places you see this, there's very little air traffic. They're going to be on confined, you know, very defined, confined routing right. to do that. Uh, I, Uber is a complete disaster in my unvarnished uh, opinion mm-hmm. and everything that they do. If you just look at the huge breach that they just had on right. their uh, their data files, right. yeah. they're they are one disaster away from getting making the Hindenburg look like a nice afternoon in <laughs> New Jersey. <laughs> Uh, but Google's plan and Amazon's plan is in t- is things that Cindy has brought up. In they're engaging in a multiple layers of it. So there's going to be, if you think of it as like the rail system that doesn't use railroad tracks, where you have defined routing, where you're going to set in computerized mm-hmm. uh, points. It's going to fly at set altitudes, 
there'll be actually directions that you're going to travel uh, one, you know, one altitude, one uh, direction. Right. Uh, the other altitude, the routes will be put down. It'll, it's going to be a controlled form of transportation. We're just going to be using the air. What's going to really impact us, and I told you this a couple of years back, Mac, is that the people who are going to lose are folks like me who fly personal airplanes right. and try to get around that. Uh, because as the airspace gets more and more congested, they're going to block out the manned aircraft, the small manned aircraft, yep. a lot. And yep. that's going to be the big change. Okay. You're not, unless people are going to be interested in learning how to fly and do those kinds of things. Why is that going to be a priority to block you guys out? There'll be because more as you have more people that are not pilots flying, yeah. okay. and you you automate this system to a higher degree, yep. um, it would be uh, you're going to be putting more highways out. And as you do that in airspace, you're going to control that. And then you're going to have the inevitable people don't want this flying over their house. Right. Uh, they don't want it over their neighborhoods. So there's going to be specific routing, and then that's going to close out small airports, and it's going to change how people move around. Right. Uh, and it's it, it, the, yeah, the it, personal it, flying and freedom is not going to be there. Right. So, right. so, Cindy, you live near an airport that's been testing drones for a long time, correct? Yes. Have you seen, I mean, how big are they when they go over your house? Do you see any of them that could, like, actually carry a person? Oh, yes. Wow. Uh, a, uh, most of them. See, this is coming. I this mean, is going to be it. About these drones look like airplanes and helicopters. Mm -hmm. okay. And so... We're talking about the size of a Cessna, maybe smaller. Wow. So this is how big they are. Mm -hmm. Now, they've also had the micro drones out here. This is the whole program. It's just crazy, right. everything I've seen. But most of these, some of these are much larger than that. I mean, you know, I've seen one that had, probably had a wingspan about, looks like it's about 80 feet. Wow. And I was like, goodness. Yeah, I mean, they're big when mm -hmm. they come through here. Right. And, well, you know, most of these things, if people don't know any better, they would think they're a regular aircraft right. or a regular drone, a regular um, helicopter. But a lot of these helicopters the military have are manned or unmanned helicopters. Mm -hmm. And the, all the new ones that are coming out are manned or unmanned. Right. Which basically means most of them is going to be unmanned. You know, uh, this is probably disclosing classified information. If it is, we'll have to cut it out. But I went over once where X works. Yep. We won't mention the name of the place. We won't. And went through the laboratory, mm -hmm. okay? And that's what was Not the lavatory, the laboratory. The laboratory, yeah. Got it. And they look like mad scientists. And, they, and that's what was sitting there. There were two, like, half size helicopters, just like little bell helicopters, mm -hmm. you know, but obviously, with, you know, not meant to carry people, right. but big enough to carry people, you know? And, uh, man, that was four or five years ago. So right. it's yeah. just going to be interesting. To I, I, I just, I, you know, this whole kind of highway in the sky thing, I mean, I know it's something that, you know, science fiction people have been talking about forever, you know, That's but true. now that it's really here, I mean, is it going to work? I, I just don't see anyone flying out there and, and not hitting each other, you know? I don't get it. Don't worry. We have uh, top notch air traffic controlling equipment up there. Yeah, okay. You know, it's sure like it second, right. gener and second also, generation. I made in China. Generation. Go ahead, please. Go ahead, Cindy. I'm sorry. This next generation system this is what it does it's completely autonomous so mm -hmm. he, he's right cobra exactly right they're going to have like freeways in the sky mm. and you're going to be programmed in on that freeway or that at that high oh, okay yeah and all right it's going to be ripped down by computers see that so i can see it now should be, you know safe if all the <laughs> yeah, we'll should be. You know, in, when, <laughs> when cars first came out, the the two only two cars and there were only two cars in Ohio, and they both hit each other. <laughs> they hit each other. <laughs> what, in an what a coincidence! Right. Hey, listen, right. Cindy Bailey Dove. You know you are one of our favorites, okay? And even though I can't call you honey or baby anymore. You're one of my favorites, and I should probably pen oh, a, a letter of apology to her and get it off to her quick. None of that on the airwaves these okay. days. You know, sorry for audio harassment. But, um, you know, we that's, love it when you're... That's okay. That's not audio harassment. Okay. Do you forgive me then? <laughs> I do. I forgive you, man. Okay, there we go. It's on tape. You're right. just such a sweetheart, really. Oh, look at there that. There you go. See? Nobody knows. Oh, <laughs> with cherries on top. Let's not go there. Yeah, definitely not us. You're <laughs> so, correct on that, Cindy. Thank you, Coco. <laughs> Cindy, thanks for joining us. And listen, we'll talk to you before Christmas, okay? Okay. Okay. 
Okay. Everybody have a great night. Cindy Bye-bye. Bailey Dove, the drone well, report. Cindy Bailey, thank you very she much. She knows more about drones than uh, all of us put together. Thanks That's a right. lot. So why don't we take a commercial break now, and um, we will be right back after this. You're listening to Mac Money's Military Exile Show here on the Distant Thunder Radio Network. We'll be right back. Over the years. <laughs> Welcome back, everyone, to McMillan's Military Exile Show here on the Distant Thunder Radio and Network. And this is McMillan. We have a full house tonight, virtually and uh, reality-wise, right? Yeah. That one? Well, I think they're all reality. Okay. Virtual is like, I don't know, make, make-believe. Yeah, okay. All right. None of that goes on around here. No, mm-hmm. we don't make it up. <laughs> anyway, um, uh, in the house with us tonight, the very famous Juan Juan is here. Um, yes, sir. He's loving uh, every minute of it, too. Yeah, really? Even the uh, part even, where— Even the crazy mail. Yeah, they sent a fan letter that half the words is were redacted Is he going to bring out. that stuff up Christmas? Yes. And then Christmas Eve, yeah, we'll do that. I make sure I get a box of rubber okay. gloves. Yeah, there you go. You, you'll get a box of rubber, my friend. You know, there may be some gloves in there, but the way things are going, <laughs> dear, dear, dear. you'll have enough uh, rubber, Ross, too. Ross, it's unbelievable. Anyway, so uh, Coco is here. Commander Culver. And lady. There he is. Okay. He sounds like he has a cold. He didn't mention it to me. Uh, did, he, did he mention to you there, Juan Juan? No, during, no. That, during that big bro hug? No, <laughs> he's he sounded fine. Okay. I think it's, he must you have be a cold, Coburn, something. you're just kind of manning up? Mac, for you, I would go through anything to uh, make the show a success. So okay. even, even manning up to the max. Really? Yeah, so he took an axe salsa, right. basically. That's right. Okay. Coburn's here, and also joining us in Paris. Barbara's Every time I say Paris. it, I can't believe it. But uh, joining us in Paris, a forward correspondent at the Coco Calder. Superfan Barbara With is with us from Paris. Bonsoir. Wow. Okay. We should Bonsoir, learn what that means. Though. What does that mean? Comment ça va? Okay. And also, uh, a, a really good friend, uh, the cutting edge, Ron Sharp, is here with us. Good evening, lady and gentlemen. Okay. This, this is wrong. This is wrong. You know what I mean? Everybody's, people... everybody's you know, masterpiece theater and we're yeah, just a couple yeah. of schmucks from this isn't right. Exeter. That's what I said. Someone's just in keep Paris. And the beer. You guys get better the more you yeah. drink. Next thing you know, yeah. I'm going to have to contribute money. Well, yeah, right. Get a little get a little bag for yeah. 120 yeah. bucks. Yeah. They'll, they'll, cut, they'll cut to the pitch girls yeah, and that's ask right. you yeah. for money. Yeah, right. <laughs> that happens every <laughs> time. Every time I see the Moody Blues, I'm always reaching so, for my pocket. Here we go. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Actually, boy. I like Pledge Weeks. Why would you? Why? Because I'll DVR it. No, you know, I haven't watched that Beatles... Uh, Oh, that's really good. Yeah, yeah. eight did, days a week. It's it's okay. It's three I DVR'd stops. it twice just yeah. in case. It's an interesting. It's yeah, interesting. That's a Ron Howard flick, right? Yeah, it isn't. It isn't. Scorsese's involved too. I just didn't like that. Where's, where's okay. Ross in the world? Where's what? Where's, where's he? Um, living? I'm in Massachusetts. Right. Okay. Yep. A little bit uh, west of London, in uh, Metro West they call that. You know, they used to just call it out there, but all of a sudden now it's yeah. Metro West. So out, it's, out off the Pike, or off. It's basically where all the rich people live, kind yeah. of one percent is. But anyway, yeah. Russ is yeah. our friend. He's our friend, and uh, we're going to talk tonight about you. Had brought this up um, a few shows ago. We were talking about something else, and you said, "How about Silbury Hill?" And, and none of us yeah. had really known about it. You know, man, I thought oh. I had read every book there was on this kind of stuff. It was new to me. Just tell people what it is, where it is, and what it is. Silbury, I used to live in the county of Wiltshire. Um, It's a very wonderful place. It's in the old Saxon kingdom of Wessex. Um, And virtually the whole county is a UNESCO World Heritage Site. It's a county that contains Stonehenge. Everybody knows about that. But to the north and slightly east of Stonehenge, about, about 20 miles is the tiny little village of Avebury. Avebury contains magnificent stone circles, standing sarsen stones, like Stonehenge, only accessible. But about half a mile out of the village is Silbury Hill, which rises from the rolling downs landscape. It's perfectly conical, and yet it's man-made. It's 130 feet tall. It's about the size of some of the smaller pyramids. And before the cathedrals rose out of the European plain in the mm-hmm. Med- Middle Ages, it was the largest man-made object north of the Alps. <laughs> now just, let's, let's just stop for a second. Here. Now, now this is how strange this is. All right? This is in, uh, what was the year they thought it was built in the U.K.? Uh, around about 2,600 B.C. Oh, I can't give the okay. exact year, but I can give you the month. In the, what month? Why, why would they know the month and not the year? It has some oh, kind of astrological thing. 
And when it was first excavated, they found the bodies of flying ants, mm -hmm. ants with their wings on, uh, on the bottom layer. And since they only fly at the end of summer, they postulated it was done. It started wow. in August. See, that's uh, you know, that's that's, that's <laughs> an egghead doing his job. That's right. You know that's what I mean, really, kind of that's great. Right there. That's, that's great field fact. science, right there. But you yeah. know, the, the more and more I've read about weird stuff that went on in the UK, man, back you know, in in like three thousand BC and everything, that that they were able to do these things, kind of things that you can't explain, like Stonehenge, you can't really explain it, but this is mm -hmm. a mound that is the size well, of a pyramid. Okay, yeah. here it is. You show me yeah, a picture of it. Think about it. I mean, it's it's, it's been estimated to take seven thousand man years to build. How would now, they the be able to do that? Built, the time it was it's built, huge. the total population of Britain was twenty thousand. That's about the size of my town one one. Mm -hmm. <laughs> In Metro amazing. West. That's yeah, it, it is so amazing. if you manage to mobilize yeah, like getting five, the Commonwealth, the pay, anybody in the Commonwealth can get that, behind a yes. project like this. <laughs> so if you Tomer. gathered 500 of those people together out of the 20,000, that's 140th mm -hmm. of the whole of the population. And imagine the political power you had to have to do that. Yeah, and they and have to get paid, right? 14 years to build. It, it, that, it doesn't make sense in a way. No. I mean, that's how long it might have taken. That's how long I suppose that they were able to, you know, uh, you put, a, put a time and date to those into it. Yep. Yep. But yeah. Yeah. the question is, uh, is, is, I mean, I don't think you could do that. The holidays are almost here, but you can still treat yourself at Guitar Center. With deals like a Fender Acoustic Electric Guitar or a Mitchell Electric Guitar Launch Pack with amp, your choice just 139 Plus, weekly doorbuster deals, special financing, the newest and hottest guitars, drums, keys, and more. And exclusive gear you can't get anywhere else. So hurry in and find your sound at Guitar Center. That today, if, if you know what I mean, you know? I think yeah. you could never yeah. do it today, but they did it. There was something telling them to do it. I know there's like uh, kind of various um, uh, theories. Mm. One of them was that... Yeah. You know that the political power in this little part of England was so, um, um, you know, concentrated. Right, that they would that the the leaders would stand on the top of this thing. Okay, yeah. now this is really crowd controlled to the you know the biggest extent. It's like wow, you know, look how powerful they are. They're way the hell up there. We're way the down down here. The thing is, then, if you stand on the top of that. You can just make out Stonehenge in the distance. See, and Stonehenge is right near it. You know, was it was it built in around the same, the same time? Same county, a little bit around about the same time, yeah, within about 500 years either way. Mm -hmm. it, but it, if you do that, then you can communicate by smoke signals or waving large flags or whatever, mm -hmm. and then you could communicate with the nearby Avery Stone Circle. So mm -hmm. you could sort of, if you extrapolate out, you could uh, put together and coordinate religious ceremonies or sacrifices or whatever. Mm -hmm. Right. Um, so, so, yeah. The Romans, when they invaded, normally their roads are in straight lines. They went around the base of this hill, <laughs> they put an encampment nearby, and they used it as a local watchtower place because wow. you can look over the countryside for huge distances. Do you think they knew what it was for, the Romans? Well, rumor, rumor was that there was a local chieftain called Zell or Sil who had a, a golden hoard buried in the, in the center of the hill or even a statue of himself on a horse. Hmm. And this caused, the Romans didn't dig, but uh, in the, the 1800s and the 1700s, there were big excavations. Uh, Hugh Percy, the first Duke of Northumberland, got a bunch of Cornish miners together, and they dug, the, dug a vertical shaft right the way down from the top. They didn't find anything. Mm -hmm. In 1849, in the Victorian era, they had a horizontal t tunnel dug all the way to the centre. Nothing. Now, there was a proper academic excavation in 1968 by Professor Richard Atkinson at University College, Cardiff. Mm -hmm. Found nothing. Hmm. And there have been so many excavations through this solid structure mm -hmm. that um, it started to collapse. And uh, English Heritage, who have control of the site, had to institute uh, stabilization works. Right, yeah. But it is an absolutely... Mind bending sight. You go there sight, and right. you are just struck in awe of the whole place. Right, and and um, you know you have to see a photo of it with with people in the photo, okay, to get a, a 
an idea of how huge this thing is. I mean, it's like I say, it's like it's the size of the pyramids, and and somehow or other, people were building these things. You know, a three thousand BC or twenty five hundred. These BC. things, how many we're talking? Well, this thing and all this other strange Stonehenge mm. stuff yeah, and Stonehenge everything. You know, weird. there's all there's it, it, Russ, Am I am I wrong when I say that there's all kinds of kind of odd stuff like that throughout? Yeah, the, the half UK, a right? mile away from where Silbury Hill is, there's West Kennet Long Barrow which is a Neolithic um, interment site. And I've been inside that. Mm -hmm. um, Stonehenge is to the south. Woodhenge, which is even more fascinating, which was a... They found the post holes for something that's analogous to Stonehenge, mm -hmm. built in wood, I think post holes um, is nearby. Maybe it's not. just full of... This the whole landscape is classified by UNESCO as a World Heritage Site. Mm -hmm. it's, it's just... Oh, and I completely forgot. The world's largest concentrated of carved uh, chalk horses, you know, the big white horses. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. There are over 13 in the county. And it only makes it's sense just... if you're seeing them from above, you know? Yeah. So yeah. Why would you do yeah. this? Um, hey, listen, Barbara with they're in Paris. What do you think of all this? you think this is just – do you think that they had extra help in quotes? It's really hard to say, you know? Mm. As someone who believes in extraterrestrials and kind of all that stuff, it's hard to believe it was just humankind. Right. Like, maybe, I guess. And, and Ross would know. If you're talking about extraterrestrials, Barbara, um, just look up Warminster, which is in the same county, and then fall off your chair. Wow. Because Warminster, we'll catch you. Warminster, Okay. Because that is the hot spot oh, that's in right. terms it, of UFO activity. Mm -hmm. It's also on a direct ley line concentration. Um, this county is, is, I lived there for 17 years. Wow, and okay, in the it's neighborhood. something else, it really yeah. is. But, but uh, let me ask you this, is, um, let's say there weren't ETs involved, but could it be that we just really don't know who these people were and we just kind of, you know, uh, assume from a lot of different factors that they were kind of like, you know, not cavemen, but... Just regular guys. Yeah, you know. They can't not, be any way more intelligent than us. I mean, they were intelligent we, for we, their own time, you yeah, know, but right. it's yeah. accumulated We have knowledge. clues. If you look at the bottom layer of Silbury Hill excavations, you will find there's a, they start out in a spiral, uh, right, you know, gradually building outwards, and they have large, they have uh, medium-sized slabs of sars and stone, they have tree branches... They also have sprigs of mistletoe, and we know oh. the Celtic people that followed these people, right, venerated mistletoe mm -hmm. as a religious object. So that's how we can extrapolate there was some religious activity associated with the creation of this incredible monument. And I think that many people who come to London for a short break and they might take a, uh, a coach trip out to see Stonehenge, and if you go to Stonehenge, mm -hmm. it's absolutely full of visitors. Um, the locals in Wiltshire, where I lived, we left Stonehenge to the Americans and the Japanese and everyone else that comes. We had Avebury, because that you can walk amongst the stones, you can mm -hmm. touch them, you can get a flight and feel the place, right? Okay. And it's much more significant because Avebury, you've got Silbury Hill and uh, West, West Kennet Long Barrow all clustered together. And uh, it is. Uh, oh, and we're going to completely ignore Avebury Manor, which is the subject for another talk. Is that like a haunted, uh, haunted house? Oh, uh, that one has more ghosts than you can shake a stick oh, at, actually, including that one a... that's preceded by the uh, aroma of roses. Believe it or not. Wow. Hey, listen. When we saw the ghost here the other night, yep, I didn't smell any roses. Did no, you? I didn't. Okay, so. I suppose there's different kind of, you know, uh, levels of ghosts. You know, there's the highfalutin ghosts, and then there's well, just... Well, now thinking back on it, well, yeah. Did, he, did, we have, did we smell roses? Was that, no, what, but, was that what that smell was? You know, he he was definitely uh, taking on the characteristics of the person Pistol Pete was talking about. Oh, really? Right? Yeah. yeah. The uh, the guy who died two years the ago? The guy who died. Bob. But we don't know if he died in the building, but Bob right. from down But he street. lived next door, so it was yeah. close by. Yeah. Wait, you guys saw the ghost? Yeah. Well, one did, and then the other night uh, we were here, and he's trying to fix his microphone, and the light over his head, um, yeah, wasn't on. It what was... happened? I was saying I'm trying to screw something in on the mic, and, and I said I wish I had a little bit more light here. And I was about to get my telephone and turn on the flashlight app. All of a sudden, 
the light comes the broken on. fluorescent light that's above me that's still broken by the way yeah came on both of them right. both bulbs came on and we just looked at each other and said the fudge word and then it went back out again <laughs> yeah that was enough light it's yeah. all it's all the light i it was needed really pretty actually. crazy and neither of us were in any condition to really you know, yeah. appreciate what was going on anyway we were uh, we watched and we were amazed by I, I just want to, <laughs> i just have, i know i have to throw this cover because i know he's just like bursting with you know his thoughts on this cover what you know do you think this was man made really man made and well and, and man yeah. hours and stuff that nothing fits, you know. But I, gr- I agree that when they come up with the estimates and they talk about it, it seems incredible that you we look at the total population it, and it leads to how do you get these you know dramatic aerial views? How do you get these alignments that they got out of that? I, I think you're right, Mac. It points to a lot of possibilities for many um, possible ways that uh, they had outside help or extraterrestrial type oh, help. Oh, but there are some things that you know, have never been explained about how things went on in Egypt and how the pyramids were done. They've mm-hmm. never completely figured out the construction. Right. And it doesn't, you know, it doesn't, uh, I, I don't rule anything out, but it, it, obviously there is some knowledge mm-hmm. that we have lost. Yes. And I will give you the modern metaphor on that. Um, I told you about this before. You know, if you take a group of young folks out now and say, Okay, to survive, we need to start a fire. The first thing they're going to do is take out their smartphone right. and YouTube <laughs> how to start a fire. fire. Okay? Yeah, right. Very good, so, Cobra. Yeah. A little social yeah, commentary. Yeah, yeah. So we're, we lose yeah. knowledge. As we gain knowledge in some other areas, we lose other skills. And there are some very famous uh, things right here in the United States, in Florida, people that built uh, these uh, structures, and they knew these ancient techniques of balancing stones and getting into positions that they would pivot around with uh, with very little um, uh, human uh, force to get them to open and close. And, 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 and I think that there's a lot to be said. Where is the source of that knowledge? I think anything is open. But and the right. technological conundrum the blows my mind. But, yeah, yeah, it's, it's like we... we um, there has to been, have to have been some kind of we, we artificial don't know. forces. These people had something going on that we don't know about. Yeah. It's, it's, it's really I don't the only think answer. Caterpillar and... Uh, but, Euclid were, were in business. Right, that's then. what I mean. So what was it? The ability to move rocks easily or so, something like that? Or, yeah. the, 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 the ancient Nepalis and the Tibetans yep. moved through sound. It, it, sound is a big mover. And, and down in South wow. America, there's these fortresses up in these that could happen. high yeah, mountains that like we couldn't build today. And uh, you know, who built them? And what right. did they know that we don't know that they had? Anyway. Ross Sharp, thanks for joining us tonight. From, My pleasure, Mac, as always. From Metro West, from the other side of the Thames River. Absolutely. Right? From Wellesley to Framingham. It's all good. Kind of. Yeah, right. Yeah. You know, once again, we're all the rich people. Live, so anyway, yeah. uh, thank you, Ross, for joining us and uh, for making us, for classing up the show. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen. Okay. Much obliged. See you later. Thank you, Ross. We'll talk to you soon. And uh, why don't we take Hi, a Russ. commercial break now, dear one? Island, one. And... Um, We'll be right back after this. Uh, you're listening to Macmillan's Military Exile Show here on the Distant Thunder Radio Network. Stay tuned. <laughs> Welcome back, everyone, to Macmillan's Military Exile Show here on the Distant Thunder Radio Network. This is Mac Maloney. It's a been a very interesting shoe there, one. It's been great. It's a very famous one one this year in the studio with us. Yep, still here. We had uh, previously in the show. We had up to six humans and one ghost. Yep. One night, but now it's just the us ghost here in the Bob. studio. Okay, yeah, the ghost of Bob. So now it's the two of us in the ghost. And he's, he just let us know that he's still here because yeah, he turned on the light. The that's light. broken fluorescent light above yeah. my head just came on for yeah. a couple of seconds. If you listen to us earlier, we've been talking about this light, and then all of a sudden it comes on. We should probably stop talking about it. Maybe that might be the road to go down. <laughs> anyway, uh, joining us on the phone is a really good uh, friend of ours out there on the West Coast where it's always sunny, man, and everything. All, all the girls uh, are in bikinis and stuff. It's Everybody's just laid back. Laid back. Traveling the Pacific Coast Highway. Yeah, high on life. Yep. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yep. Merle Fankhauser, our friend, our surf rocking friend. How are you doing tonight there, Merle? I'm doing very good, Mac. Good to hear your voice. <laughs> okay, same here. Um, the best story I can tell you about Merle recently, we've known each other for quite a while now. Yeah. And uh, for you, for people who don't know, he wrote the song Wipeout. He's uh, been on the uh, surf rock scene for uh, 
a long time. He knows a lot of people. He's played with Willie Nelson and, uh, you know, he knows people from Spirit and the Beach Boys and stuff like that. So the, so the cat gets around. Okay. Mm. Um, Spirit, great band. Yeah, Spirit, great band. You knew uh, Jack Cassidy, right, Mel? Ed Cassidy. Ed Cassidy. Yeah, Cassidy. He, uh, Cassidy. he and I, you know, were in a band for quite a few years wow. when Spirit kind of slowed down called the Fankhauser Cassidy Band. Oh, nice, yeah. And uh, I met him back in the 60s, just a quick hello passing in a hallway at a concert, and then we got back together in 1990 and became good friends and started playing music together and mm. doing TV shows, and he was kind of my guru. He yeah. Played up until he was about eighty-seven, and yep. then he passed away sadly at eighty-nine. He looked like a guru. He was like the first guy that would have a bald head back there in the sixties. But exactly, he was doing it way no. before anybody else was. Yeah. You listen well, to those... Ewell Brenner was the yeah, uh, movie star that you... shaved his head. You listen to those first two albums. It's really going back now. Spirit and the family that plays together. Okay, which is the first one? The one with the cover with the with yeah. the different yep. photos blended yeah. together to make one face. Yep. Yep. Okay, and then good. the family That's plays together. They're sitting on like motel steps or something. You listen to those albums, and you realize when they were recorded, yeah. it, oh, man, they were very much ahead of their time. Really interesting. That game. first one was like, what, 68, I think, right? Yeah, if, yeah, maybe it might have been 67, to tell you the mm. truth. It was pretty early. It was pretty early. But uh, just the you know, the, the uh, just the just way they played and the way they put the songs together was just amazing. So anyway, so um, – and then at one, I want to tell the story. The, the best story about Meryl in the past year is that I have a friend and a friend of the show in Moscow, as it turns out. Okay, and uh, we correspond on Facebook, mm-hmm. and um, we're always talking about um, music. Okay, and uh, he's very much into music. So I'll write to him. And I'll say, "Yeah, what are you listening to these days?" Okay, and one of the times they did, he writes back, "Meryl Fankhauser." So you know, I go, "Oh, well, that's funny." I write to him. I says, "You know, he's a friend of mine, right?" And the guy in Russia said, "No." No, we're all listening to them over here. Okay, that was like about a year and a half ago. So, you know, there's there's that that surf beat around the world. People love it. A lot of it is because of Merrill. So, so now you have a little bit of an announcement to uh, to tell us, right? Yeah. Well, just about what you were saying too. You know, uh, Dmitry Gerdovoy, uh mm-hmm. his brother is Oleg Gerdovoy, right. that's in a Russian space rock yes. band. Yeah, and uh, they heard one of my songs, one of my instrumental sort of space rock songs, "Messages from the Dome." They oh, heard that on the radio in Poland, yeah, on a Polish radio station, and they were putting out this Russian space rock compilation, and they licensed that song to be on the compilation, and I was very honored. So I've been communicating with them all. Right. all Quite a bit, and uh, it's really interesting, Mac, how the songs that they played, they were like big orchestrated versions, yes. and they all had a little flavor of the 60s instrumental surf, but right. with a space twist, and and I did, you know, an album yes. uh, called Signals from Malibu. Yeah, that I love had those that, songs. I love those songs. That uh, style right so so now you know I'm not, so a lot of people around the world know you and uh you know recognize the music but now you seem to keep i don't know keeping it going i don't want to say reinventing yourself because a few years ago you would nominate one of the cd that you're involved with nominated for a grammy and now the news you're going to tell us tonight is well it's very interesting from the same 1967 Fapper Dockley album, that was the title of the band. Fapper Dockley. Uh, they have now uh, picked the lead song that starts the album off, Lila, which was really a kind of a dreamy uh, folk rock song, to be in this new movie, Chappaquiddick, Whoa. based on on Senator Ted Kennedy. Wow. And, okay. yeah. and they, That's amazing. they've got <laughs> some young stars in it. Kate Mara is playing Mary Jo Kopechny. Wow, okay. And Jason Clark is playing Ted Kennedy. And then my one of my favorite old character actors, he was in a lot of westerns, Bruce Dern. Oh, oh wow. playing, Bruce Dern. Laura Dern. Playing uh, Joe Kennedy. Yeah. He was great in the last Quentin Tarantino movie. And, you know, and he, was a, he was in a science fiction movie called Silent Running, where he's the only guy on a big ship full of uh, 
trees or something. Mm-hmm. That was a super duper movie way back seventies. So, so all right. So now you're gonna have uh, how many how many songs are gonna be in the movie? Well, Lila is is the song off of that 1967 okay. album that's going to be in the movie, right. and it's already been had a, a, a closed screening to the Academy Award board, mm-hmm. and they love it. Yeah. So they're saying it's going to be touted for some kind of a nod at the 2018 oh, yeah. right. Academy yeah. Awards. That's friggin' excellent. Yeah, you get right. your suit so, ready for that. Huh? Yeah, you better get your suit ready. Is right. <laughs> that's what everybody's saying. Wow, that's crazy, so man. I, I am just amazed, Mac, that tomorrow's girl yes. that you mentioned that was in the 2011 Grammy-nominated Rhino box set, where the action is, yes. L.A. Nuggets, 1965 to 68. Tomorrow's girl is from that same. 1967 album wow. and the song Supermarket, Thomas Pynchon put it in his novel Inherent Vice and he mentioned the band. So that's three songs that in recent years have come back into the right. spotlight from that album. Well, you know, that, uh, when it first came out, I thought, well, it's okay. Mm-hmm. I didn't really think that much of it. But in later years, in the late 70s, it became like a cult mm-hmm. uh, 60s relic, very valuable. And I found out from the Germans in about 1978 that uh, copies of it were going for 650 to 750 well, in Germany. Yikes. And then... Uh, it started going for a thousand dollars a copy. Yeah, and I yeah. just wish I would have thrown a hundred of them in the closet. Yeah, right. Oh, Jeez. You know, but I, I, let me just—I'll try an explanation real quick. I think you've created your sound, the sound that you created back in the '60s. Create a little bit. The holidays are almost here, but you can still treat yourself at Guitar Center with deals like a Simmons electronic drum monitor, only two forty-nine. Or a Proline mic and accessory pack, 40% off. Plus, weekly doorbuster deals, special financing, the newest and hottest guitars, drums, keys, and more. And exclusive gear you can't get anywhere else. So hurry in and find your sound at Guitar Center. The piece of culture. And now That's people right. want to do movies that want to harken back to that time. They go to your music, and right away you set the mood, you set the tone. You know, when hears that music, they know this where it's coming from. This music is the—that's something to be really proud the of. Soundtrack for that culture, right? That yeah, period. that's what you've done, right? Hey, yeah, and because this incident, you know, with the Chappaquiddick thing with Ted Kennedy mm-hmm. happened in 1969. Right. Uh, the producers of the movie say they zeroed in on a lot of good 60s music cool. that was from that idea. era. So oh. I'm oh. keeping my fingers crossed that they put out a soundtrack album oh. on it All because, right. <laughs> as you know, I played on one of the songs that was in Pulp Fiction, Comanche mm-hmm. by the Revels. Oh, cool. You and played that on that? that soundtrack went triple platinum. Wow. Yeah. wow. So I'm hoping this movie will do even half as I, I, I good got, as Pulp Fiction did. I got to tell you this. If it, I know around this area, I think the entire country, you know, as soon as something called Chappaquiddick comes out, people are going to go see it. Oh, yeah, definitely. That's a must-see, believe me, especially around here. Um, in the well, Wayland. since the news broke, Mac... I have done, I'm looking at the calendar now, I've done eight interviews already okay. in November, and I did four in October when I first found out about it. Mm-hmm. And I've got interviews now scheduled clear into February. Wow, cool. I just did one on the the news on TV down in Santa Maria, which is south of me last mm-hmm. Wednesday. So I'm just about talked horse. <laughs> cool. That's cool. What's hey, the release but, date on this? Uh, do a, we know? When's the, when's well, the movie coming out? The the uh, release date that everybody's saying is going to be April 6th of next year. Okay. Yeah, cool. All right. Yeah. Well, uh, hey, listen, couldn't happen to a better guy, believe me. Yeah. You, know? Um, you know, thanks for oh, being a friend of the you. show. and uh, An icon in the industry. If that uh, yeah. soundtrack thing comes true, you can pick us up in your private jet. Let's yeah. get that a Bermuda or a It's going to be ka City. <laughs> yeah, yeah. ka wow. Oh, the other thing I wanted to mention, too, Mac, is uh, an album 
is coming out on Cleopatra Records. You may know them, the L.A. label, called Tiki Lounge Live by Merle Fankhauser and Friends. (laughs) And it features various groups that have played on my back lot stage Mm -hmm. when we're filming the TV show over the years. And the last song that Ed Cassidy and I wrote and recorded together is on this album called Out on the Town. So that's coming out January 12th, and I'm kind of excited about that. So the year is ending on a very good note for me. Yeah, that's one thing I didn't mention one one. This guy has like a little nightclub in his backyard, okay? And they go out there and play and... And yep. uh, have hula girls dance and uh, oh wow yeah it's uh, it's kind it of goes super- all up and down the <laughs> central California coast yeah. and seen all over in Hawaii we uh, have about three million viewers and we just finished our one hundred and six show and we had Peter Lewis of Moby Grape oh Moby oh, Grape oh, holy yeah. cow holy cow wow is he the one displaying <laughs> the finger is he the one displaying the finger. Yeah, the first album cover. Is he going to give him the finger in the first cut? No, that said, guy's probably uh, long gone. Uh, how old is this guy? Uh, I think he's 71. Wow, he made it through those the, years. Amazing. The thing that blew our minds, Mac, we were done filming. We have an, uh, enough room for about 50 people to sit in the audience mm-hmm. under an awning. And you've seen the stage. It, yes. it looks like you're in Hawaii. People mm-hmm. think it's it's filmed in Hawaii, but... After the audience left, and we were all just sitting around talking, and his wife and his daughter, he sings now, does a duo with his daughter. He says, yeah, I grew up in Beverly Hills and met a lot of movie stars because my mom was in the business, Hmm. and I ran away when I was about 20 to San Francisco during the summer of love period, and that's how we got Moby Grape going. Right, sure. And I said, oh, was your mom an actress? And he very humbly and calmly says, yes, my mother was Loretta Young. No way. Wow, really? (laughs) And we all, the camera people and the crew and Jane, uh, my better half, we all just about fell out of our chairs. It was just how people... Couldn't believe it. I love Loretta Loretta Young in the 50s, you know, 60s. Yeah, and she... She came in, came down that curved stairway yeah. in that mansion, and he said, yeah, that was our house it, oh, wow. in Beverly Hills. <laughs> well, and she married Tom Lewis, who was a set designer, and I guess designed some of her evening gowns, and that's how he got the name Peter Lewis. But oof, there's a twist to this whole story. Okay. I'll try to do it real quick. Jane was so interested, she went in on the Internet after they left and looked up Loretta Young. Well, she found this interesting piece of news there that uh, said that Loretta Young and Clark Gable did a movie back then called The Call of the Wild. Well, they got romantically involved, and she got pregnant by Clark Gable. Yikes. And nobody knew this. They were trying to keep it under wraps because the studio said none of that, no fraternizing right, sure. with your actors or actresses or your contract will be canceled. Right. So what she did, she left the country, had the baby, mm. it was a girl, mm-hmm. and pretended to adopt it and came back to the state. Wow. Well, Good Peter plan. Peter had an older brother and he had this older sister. And he didn't know till many, many years later, and neither did she, that Clark Gable was the father. Wow. I think the kid would come out and with a she, mustache and big ears. <laughs> <laughs> wow, that's so a good story. I mean, yeah. I mean, that blew our minds. Jane mm-hmm. and I were sitting here going, wow. wow. I mean, I should <laughs> just tell people, if you don't know who Loretta Young is, just Google her. She was... There's only one word to describe a MILF, yeah. right? She was like Smoke the show. MILF. Of Smoke the... show for your time. Wow. And yeah. yeah. Good for him. <laughs> Mom. My mom's we a MILF. So TV Peter, show, right? Peter lives near me now, and mm-hmm. uh, we're going to get together and play some more music to okay. play with my band. And I'm doing a gig Friday night with Louis Ortega from uh, the Texas Tornadoes and oh, cool. um, Sir Douglas Quintet. Oh, Ooh. man. Remember them. Okay. 
Uh, hey, listen, real quick. Uh, we have like 30 seconds left. How do you find out that, you know, um, they've picked your song for a movie? Does someone call you? You get a letter? Or... Well, I have an agent down there, Jody uh, Friedman mm -hmm. from HD Music Now, and he pitches stuff to movies cool. and TV, and he found out they were looking for that period music, and he pitched it to them, and they loved it. Nice. And he called me up on the phone all excited and they gave us a pretty good advance, you nice. know, not a lot of money or anything, okay. but it's a good faith deal. And, um, you know, it's on the Internet. You can look it up, mm -hmm. and there's even a trailer from it. You know what this is called, one one. It's called Making Money While You Sleep. That's you right. Know, something that's, that you did so that, many years ago, still life. making money, man. Yep. That is, that's very, very cool. Multiple streams of income. Right. And, and, you know? and your agent makes you up. That guy it's years happen. ago when he heard that yeah. album, a famous publisher in Hollywood, he said, you know, Merle, these songs are going to be like rare valuable bottles of wine mm. in the future and mm. i didn't know what he meant and now i get it that's cool man well like i said before yeah. it couldn't happen to a better guy merle Fankhauser. the good luck keeps rolling we should go to las vegas sometime my friend yeah well i'm waiting for you to come out here okay. and visit me so i can put you on tiki lounge oh imagine that can you imagine I'd love that? that yeah, yeah. okay we're well, not really in hawaii or in california you know just as good. <laughs> thank you very much, Merle, and uh, really congratulations on this. This is exciting. Okay, thank you. Okay, um, good job. Bye bye. Merle Fankhauser, that's cool, man. What a life, you know. What a life he leads. <laughs> it, and it's always, you know, one surprise after another. Wasn't yeah. Wipeout the most air drum yeah. song in yes. high school? Or on, or you, or on, on uh, desk. Desk, yeah. Uh, That's I've, it. I've, I've lost the chops, but you really had to be fast to do it. Fast in the to say you lost I've the chops. I've worn out a hundred drummers trying to play <laughs> that. To, to say it's you amazing. lost the chops mean you had them in the first place. Well, I did have it. I okay. was able to do it. Why don't we go to a commercial break now, and uh, we'll be back with the uh, next segment of our really big show. You're listening to Mac Maloney's Military Exercise Show here on the Distant Thunder Radio Network. We'll be right back after the Radio <laughs> Network. This is Mac Maloney. Uh, we have a crowd with us tonight. A lot of kumbaya tonight there. It's, uh, it's like a reunion tonight. The famous, very, very famous Juan Juan is here. Yes, sir. Uh, in the building. And also, right down the hall, zig and zag a little bit, the equally famous Coco. Coco. Commander Cobra. Good evening. Us. There he is, way down there. We haven't seen him much tonight. Usually, he's I'm down here with Bob. Bob and I have been playing uh, backgammon. The ghost of Bob. Okay. Yeah. Excellent. Have he to, has to uh, say a lot. But he's determined. That's good. Okay. Tell him to leave the lights on next Does time. he have a flannel plaid shirt on? Huh. Because that's how I saw him. And smoking a pipe. Nope. No smoking. No? no. They don't smoke a pipe. He's giving me a, 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 a nonverbal gesture for you, Juan Juan. So oh. I'm not sure what that's all about. <laughs> wow. He can see two balls. Anyway. Oh, Bob the ghost. Yeah. Giving the finger to Juan Juan. Boy. I thought, hey, it, was, I thought it was a are, wave, and I just waved back. When ghosts are going after you, you may get problems there, pal. But I, thought it, I thought he was a salesperson from the other station. People find you soothing. But, but Pete said there was no such person That's around right. that had yeah. any keys. Then we had the light incident and the skunk earlier today. Yeah. yeah. Something's not right. And when he shut off the lights in the in the house, and I didn't even know where the switch was to put it back on. Your own house? No, here. Oh, here. Okay. Yeah, but I know. Yeah, the switch is Went in the we... kitchen lounge area in the little conference room right there where we had yep. a little inaugural party. Okay, yes. And then right. must have gone out that door. Because that's where the light switch is for right. that area, and I couldn't find the light switch until I went over to that door. Wow, okay. I'm wandering around in the dark, totally huh. pitch dark in that room. Well, this is a little slice of your life. We I had to turn on my flashlight app. <laughs> did you really? <laughs> I did. Supposedly they were all connected to Russia. Have you heard that? You know? <laughs> I know. Anyway. Okay, so. They're all, the screen's going to shatter at once okay. by some hack. Oh, so <laughs> it's, it. everybody will be at Staples lined up. We, 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 screen broken? Wow. <laughs> Maybe it would be just a huge conspiracy of the people who fix the screens, yeah, right? That's right. These days, anything can happen. Uh, Foxcom. Okay. Is that the <laughs> name of the movie? I'll talk about later. All right. You're cutting into switching Emily's time. All right, let's go. Uh, Coco, we, 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 already... get the, we get the same pay, though, right? Did we, we do. Yeah, yeah, yes. Exact same pay. The same stipend. Uh, did we already throw it to Coco? You're still here with us, right? Oh, yeah, I'm still no, here. Bob and I are listening. we just like well, to hear from right. Emily and Steve. Okay. <laughs> okay. I recognize the name Bob. So, um, Switchblade Steve Ward up there in the Bowl of Flakes, uh, Battle Creek, Michigan, where mm -hmm. they make all the record cereals. How are things with you? Good. Okay. <laughs> and a few words. And, I'm, uh, I'm going to leave him one more. Okay. I, next week I'll have something really dynamic to really? say, but okay. not this week. All right. It's a tease. 
It was a short answer, then a D. So that's next right. Week. Also, he's being a little bit flaky right now. Right? Flaky, yeah, flaky. Battle Creek, very good one. One, hang on, hang on, buddy. Thank you very much. You're welcome. Uh, for adding to the, I, I, so you're saying I'll be in the crunch for something next That's week? Right. Oh, wow. <laughs> okay. it's crunch time for you all the time. Oh, okay, remember he's a captain, and we have a. Commander. Do they have like a big silo filled with like frosted flakes, and and there's like a big accident? All of a sudden, the silo tips over, and everybody's buried in frosted, frosted flakes, flakes. Oh, stop. like the yeah. like stop. the big what like the big answer? molasses spill in yeah, Boston. Yeah, Boston. Right? Yeah, killed like twenty uh, fifty people. Molasses yeah, just huge, flood, flooded molasses. The huge molasses right. spill. Really dying of flood of molasses, boy. That's some really bad luck. Boy, talk about a sticky wicket that was. Anyway, so, well, can uh, you imagine what happens to the snap crackle pop if they have a leak? Ooh, oh, that's that's what oh, we're wondering. Oh. Might be the first ever for Steve Arena. Anyway, uh, effects. okay, I, let's move on. I have to say, Bob Wyth is also with us from Paris, right? Right. Okay. And she's saying, she's saying, I stayed up for this. Yeah, right. No, well, she's not the only one. And uh, Emily. It's like 1.30 in the morning here. Wow. Right. Okay. Yep. It feels like 1.30 here. Yeah. Emily Minamaya calling in from Cincinnati, I assume, joining the gang, right? Indeed. Wow. Okay. She sounds good. Yeah. Uh, that was a one, one. That was a very sharp indeed. So, um, all right. Switch Reno. Yes. In, in 30 seconds, we have left. No. <laughs> okay. No. Uh, All right. Just tell this us your story. This, yeah. Yep. This is a strange one. Okay. This is uh, uh, Helene Smith. Her actual real name was Catherine Elsie Mueller. Uh, she lived around the turn of the last century. We're talking the late 1900s. Okay. Uh, I'm, I'm sorry, the late 1800s. And uh, uh, she was a, a medium. They called her a non-professional spirit medium, which I guess means she had mediumistic abilities, but didn't set up, set up a booth, you know, right, tie, tie for the it. cosmic vibrations. Uh, she lived in Geneva, and she discovered in about, uh, oh, 1894 or so that she had these um, mediumistic abilities. And she contacted, or at least believed she contacted, people like uh, Victor Hugo, the famous author, and so forth. Well, she came to the attention of a, of a, uh, a uh, Swiss psychologist, Theodore Flournoy. He ended up writing a book called From India to the Planet Mars. He studied this lady for several years. She not only believed that she was in contact with Mars and could actually see these these incredible vistas of Mars. Uh, she also believed at one time she was a Hindu princess and also Marie Antoinette. Had to get a you know a real uh, person in there, I guess. That, you know, if you're going to be uh, really talking about uh, reincarnation. Um, uh, now, like I say, he became aware of this lady and. Uh, that she had been having these visions of being on Mars. Uh, uh, let's see. <clears throat> Find my. I'm skipping around here to try and make this brief. That's okay. Yeah, okay. it's only time. We're not into time. Yeah. Oh, okay. All right. All right. Time stops. Uh, right time stops when we're around. Please. So, like I say, she. Oh, she also was. Uh, I think uh, one of the the first ones to uh, do a lot of writing, which is very common these days. Wow. And, and some of the information she was getting from, in quotes, Mars was through automatic writing. But one time in particular, uh, well, when this first happened, she she felt like she was in a dense fog and it changed all into all kinds of different colors. <laughs> oh, then all yeah. of a sudden she's in this this huge house it's... and she's she's walking in, on the planet Mars and uh, she sees she's in a giant assembly hall. She sees and it's very, very vivid. And when Flournoy uh, examined her, she wasn't getting these things in fragments so much. These were like real experiences that she was uh, going through. Wow. How old was she at the time? Uh, she was, uh, I think, in her uh, 20s, early 20s. Okay. All right. And uh, good to know. Now, uh, the, uh, I mean, she even. Are you guys hearing that? Uh, yeah. You know, I'll tell you, as soon as you said automatic writing, confirm this for me one one. Did his voice go a little, uh, uh, you know, almost like that? Trailed off. Yeah. Something. Yeah, something a little over. bit. Yeah. Wow, that was very strange. Okay. So, yeah, we can. Uh, let, let, me, let me give you an example here. Okay. Uh, one night she, she's awakened. It's, it's very windy outside. She's worried about the flowers. She's got flowers on the window. Yes. So she gets up, and then she sits back down in her bed, and all of a sudden she's sitting on a bench on Mars. And she's surrounded by a completely alien landscape. There's strange, and she's surrounded by strange and exotic people. Uh, 
the the bench she is, seems to be sitting on is on the very edge of this this huge lake kind of a has a pinkish blue tinge to it there's a bridge nearby i mean she's seeing this in incredible detail she's seeing this beautiful bridge nearby and parts of the bridge are transparent uh she sees a man on the bridge this man turns out she she actually became acquainted with some of the individuals here this guy's name was uh astane and he was uh now hang on stop he, stop 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 oh i know i shouldn't i His shouldn't name? even said it yeah, i knew i shouldn't have said it. i spell it a s t a n e see now listen there are times yeah. when you just That's gotta a change your name you know what man. you know Astane. what just, let's just call him fred okay okay, okay. <laughs> he was standing on the bridge. He was carrying something. She called it like a carriage lantern. It was emitting flames and so forth and enabled him to fly, kind of like a jetpack. He cruises down. He touches the water briefly, comes up and lands back on the bridge. When she comes out of this trance or whatever, she was, was in this, this whatever you want to call it, whether she was actually on Mars or in some kind of vivid trance. Uh, it lasted about 20 minutes, she knows, because of the way the candle burned down. So... Mm -hmm. uh, and, and like I say, Flournoy uh, realized that these were – seemed to be, I mean, to her anyway, real experiences. She wasn't getting fragments of information mm -hmm. like uh, some psychics do or, or sensitives do. Right, right. You know, uh, uh, the strange thing too is um, – and I'll say this quickly. There's a thing on, you know, who knows, PBS the other night, and they were talking about the uh, that psychic who – he was the guy who predicted the, Bur uh, the Bermuda Triangle. He was very, very famous. Mm -hmm. um, do you remember his name there? Switch. Um, that, 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 that predicted the Bermuda Triangle? Yeah, Is that what yeah. You and he used to do all these readings and stuff, and they got not, like, really, uh, Was really... it uh, uh, Carswell or something like that? Or, uh, uh, okay, all right. Uh, we uh, got to stop the not, show. Or Hercos, Peter Hercos, maybe? No, no, hang on. We'll start Edgar again. Edgar Casey. Edgar Casey, that's it. Oh, Casey. Oh, Edgar. yeah, of course. And the thing that, that made, and, and, and some of the stuff that he saw was so vivid and, and came to kind of real life, okay? And the reason he got that way is that he got hypnotized one day. And there were three levels of going into hypnosis. Right. And he got to go one, two, three, and then come back the same way, okay? And he gets stuck right. at number two mm -hmm. coming back. Mm -hmm. Never went to number one. And suddenly he's coming up with this, these crazy stories, you know? So the fact that some people might have that kind of ability, we just don't know about it. Yeah, he proved that uh, it does exist. But but apparently, uh, I think you know, Casey was really tuning in. I mean, they got feedback. They could, they could uh, determine that some of the stuff that he was – uh, sensitive to was real. Now, mm -hmm. some of it was way off in the future, hasn't been proven or whatever. Right. Uh, Flournoy really believed that these were fantasies and so forth, even though she was speaking in Martian. And when she would speak in this language, there would certain words be repeated. The syntax seemed to be solid, uh, but they think it was, uh, it had kind of the same. The holidays are almost here, but you can still treat yourself at Guitar Center. With deals like a Casio CDP-135 digital piano, just $299, or a Cordoba Protégé ukulele, just $59. Plus, weekly doorbuster deals, special financing, the newest and hottest guitars, drums, keys, and more. And exclusive gear you can't get anywhere else. So hurry in and find your sound at Guitar Center. Structure is French, and she was uh, French originally. You know, she grew up in France. Okay. So, but but there's another. Now there were several other women that uh, that uh, this kind of thing happened to, and um, find my note here. There's uh, Carl Jung. Oh. There was a young lady that uh, they don't really identify her by name, mm -hmm. but she also was was having these visions of Mars, not nearly in the same detail as uh, Helene Smith, mm -hmm. but. Uh, I, uh, she she had an experience one time that's kind of reminiscent to the you know the the more modern day contactees of right. the fifties okay. about the beautiful space brothers and to be distinguished from the abdu abductees where right. where you know usually the abductee these days talks about these nasty little greys takes them up in the spaceship and examines them right. the contactees well. but met were the beautiful space brothers with long flowing hair yes. and their bell shaped craft and so forth yes yes. Well, this lady had an experience on a train one time. She'd had all these visions of Mars and so forth. And she meets, she sees one of these people in her visions that she believes is from Mars. Okay. And it, it uh, she didn't have any, any, you know, didn't have any conversation with him. But she was so freaked out by this that she completely stopped uh, 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 using her mediumship abilities. Wow. Huh? Uh, but this, this kind of, I was going to segue a little bit into, you know, the... Uh, Again, you're talking about the Space Brothers in the, yes. the 1950s and 1960s, yes. there were several people that uh, 
claimed or believed they were in contact with the Space Brothers. And this may be where Emily will come in a little bit because they used they used automatic writing. They uh, yes. used uh, channeling. Mm-hmm. They used uh, uh, Ouija boards. Yes. All and right. the, the interesting thing about this is that a lot of these people, you've got George Hunt Williamson, yes. you've got Carla Ruckart and so forth that channeled Ra. George Hunt Williamson was one of the original witnesses to the, mm-hmm. supposedly to the Adamski landing, oh, yes. but then had all these contacts uh, later on. Uh, but a lot of these people didn't know each other, but the same names, the same entities right. keep seeming to show up. And even some of the same themes show up, like the uh, the good guys are always the, the Palladians. The bad guys are from Orion. Yes. And, and there are other themes. But uh, yes. uh, maybe this is a good time to bring Emily in yes. because, uh, uh, the like, like I say, can you, I can't imagine uh, – trying to contact the Space Brothers with a Ouija board. Bob well, had a request one of the uh, methods that the, they did. The Ouija board, he'd like to have Emily speak. So yes. I'm not sure what that's all about. Wow. Okay. <laughs> we happen to have an em- uh, Ouija board right now. <laughs> we had an intervention there. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> well, okay. Emily, um, what, the, what, what powers a Ouija board? Is it just the vibrations in people's fingers or something? I mean. Oh, I've, gosh. I don't I don't know. I, I'm so conflicted on Ouija boards as a, a practice, but I, I think they're just a another tool to be able to communicate with spirits um, that have passed. I think it's more the the intention that you're using mm-hmm. it with. I mean, you could do the same thing talking into a voice recorder, trying to, um, you know, during a, a ghost hunt and, right. and asking spirits to communicate with you. I think it's kind of the same thing. Right. Um, but but to touch on what Steve was talking about at you know, the turn of the century, the last century, um, and, and the paranormal communications that were happening, um, with the folks that Steve mentioned, uh, there, there's quite a bit with the Ouija board. Cause that's around the time that it was, I don't want to say invented, but mm. it came to be popular. Right, okay. Um, I think it was in the mid 1800s and then later 1800s is when it really took off. And I want to say it started the whole craze with it started in Ohio actually. Right. Oh, did um, it really? I thought it started over in Europe. It seems like a European thing. To me, doesn't it? Well, I saw it on Downton Abbey, really? so yeah. oh, well. that's, that's in England. <laughs> they, it? they very well could have had them over they there. Did. Why don't they just call it Downtown Abbey? Yeah. Not, um... Of course, Downton Abbey starts in uh, a week before the sinking of the oh. Titanic. Oh, really? Yeah. Okay. Oh, I see. Yeah. I mean, that's the that's time frame. Show, yeah. But I think they, I think mm-hmm. they started yeah. in Ohio. Like yeah, it goes way said, back, and then, yeah. and they migrated over right. to Downton Abbey. Listen, they, right. In the couple minutes we have left, I've all, I mean, we've asked this question before. We never get a good answer. How come you can't find something definite like the score of the Super Bowl from uh, a Ouija because board? Because everybody you know? says it doesn't work that way. Yeah, but, but, but why? I know. I, I know it. They you said, know? well, it doesn't work that why way. Why not? Why can well, I? Well, the, the story. Barbara, go ahead, please. Bob, Barbara, you've got some experience. No, no. You're in Paris. No, you're, no. we, we've no talked more. about this. Let Emily, you, you talk. Okay. Emily. All right. Well, I, I was going to give, I don't know why it can't tell us things mm-hmm. all the time, um, and I don't use them myself, but I will say it, it, it's said in the history of the Ouija board, and I don't know that this has been verified or can be verified, but it was said that uh, when the, the inventor took it down to the patent office, that the patent officer who was reviewing the patent to approve it and had never talked to this man before and they hadn't exchanged names. Mm-hmm. And he said, the only way I'll prove this is if we ask the Ouija board to spell out my name. And Whoa. it did. Oh, I just uh, wow. checking and Bob this, wanted to make a comment. The that the, oh, Bob the, the ghost Ouija, wants to say something. Bob had a comment that the Ouija board was boomed out of Pittsburgh in 1891. So I'm not wow. sure on that. I don't have the ability to check that. Mm. That's He's Bob's. He's a ghost. Uh, That's right. Ghost Wiki. It's a U.S. thing. Ghost Wiki. Right? It's yes. a Ouija mm-hmm. U.S. thing. Wow. Where, which whatever state it was in, we did it. And then it migrated. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. Bob's saying Pittsburgh. So that would be Pennsylvania. All right. Bob the ghost. It's all getting, Ohio, be, Pittsburgh, from from Madeline Island, it's all the same, you know. Wow. Not according anything, to Bob. Well, anything west of Chicago is all one big sort of thing. So go on. Oh, <laughs> and there goes <laughs> half our audience. Thank you very much. And, it's it's, an, it's simply a non entity. Bob the ghost is getting to be uh, quite the know it all, it sounds like, in the past minute or so. So listen, why don't we do this? Why don't we thank everybody? Thank you, uh, Emily, for that. We'll have to do a longer version. You know what we should do? We should bring in a Ouija board and do it on the air. Yeah. That'd be interesting. They sell the Toys R Us, I think. It's Milton, yeah. Milton Bradley, I think, makes okay. it. I, I might be doing a different radio show that night. Okay. <laughs> yeah, I, I, I know I won't be in the audience. Okay. I mean, I won't wow, be they're the dropping studio. like flies. Holy cow. 
She'll piss well, I'll, I'll, um, I'll fly out just to do the Ouija board. Oh, no, okay. we're okay. Ouija okay. boards. All right. On board. Thank you very much. I'm not afraid. Of, I ain't afraid of no Ouija board. Hey, listen, now that we have all the people here, there's something that we've been remiss in doing, uh, Juan Juan. We haven't saluted the Cobra. Okay. That's Bob it. brought that up, but I told Bob no big deal. See, even the ghost is given. Anyway, so why don't we do it now? All right, let's get it over with. Unmask, right? Get it over with. That's the attitude. Thanks. That makes it special. Here, we go. Here he comes. Walk it down. Here we right. go. I smash the tag. Including Bob the ghost. And he has to return the salute. Okay. You're right. Before we lower our salute. So Bob had two comments. He likes it when there's lots of women on the show. He okay. likes that. Okay. And he thinks Barbara's salute was the best. So I'm not yeah. sure what that's all about. Good. Wow, I was trained by, <laughs> by a guy in the camera oh, Bob the ghost. Where the thing goes, how straight this thing is. Yep. Wow. Yeah, I was trained. Are you, you were saying namaste? Is that what you were doing? Uh, namaste. <laughs> is that what that means, namaste? Yeah. I it's was like, like not nasty. Like, it's like peace, right? I hate to say it, boy. Right? And five I thought years, they were saying Doris Day. Doris Day. <laughs> oh, boy. Oh, God. <laughs> you know, like, Way to spend that last couple of minutes yeah, right there, Doris. 4.30 in the morning. It's 3 o'clock in Paris. It's 3 o'clock in Paris. Time to go out. All right, why don't we take a uh, commercial break now? No, you know what we're going to do? Have you seen that show, Indian Summers, on PBS? No, no, Great no. Great series. No, I don't even know what PBS is on my right all right, you know what we're gonna do? We're gonna end the show. How about that? No way. Yeah. No, yes. I'm gonna be here all night. All the, the fun. extended version. This is it for the fun. Okay. So, the, thank the you. After show. The after you show. To, you you put need, on the website like. Thanks, overnight. Emily. That's right. Thanks, Steve. You need a and ticket. Charge for it. You need a ticket for the uh, after show, my dear. Oh, you have to know someone inside. I don't know. Steve said the secret word: charge for it. Okay, there you go. Everybody likes after show stuff, behind the scenes. We have to say, Emily, Steve. Nice to see you. You too. Nice well, to see you. I'm going to ask you some questions on Facebook, and I'll connect with you too, Emily. Oh, excellent. Wow. Okay, great. It's a hug fest on the air. Wow. I still don't know Emily's Facebook thing. Okay. And so I, there's going to be secret. Man won't know Facebook. anything about this, right? <laughs> One got this, five I'll, friends. Yeah. Okay. At this point, you probably One's got five don't have friends to know. on Facebook. Okay. Now that I'm on Facebook, finally. Okay. Compared to my okay. three thousand, but that's okay. That's all right, Bob. I'm not going right. to try to catch up to you. Right. Why should you? What you she's got the whole rock and roll like. industry yeah. friends with her, you know? Right. Uh, I mean, she's from Minneapolis, right? I so something. Prince is probably a friend of hers. I have two nephews. One's 21, well, one's 15. Prince is talking they, with Bob. They don't know what Facebook really is. Right. <laughs> they, they left Facebook. Prince is talking with me. When they're in the fifth grade. Yeah, I know. Uh, thank you very much, uh, Barbara. I hate to say goodbye, but I know you have to go out at 3 a.m. Au revoir. Au revoir. We'll Au revoir. Soon. There she goes. Wow, we. Uh, Emily Mitterman. Au revoir, mon ami. Emily M. See, it's hard to say on the radio. Emily M. Emily M. <laughs> Emily M. And for Magnificent. Okay. Thanks for joining us on that uh, sure. report on Ouija boards. Well, who is Ouija? Is there some guy named Luigi Ouija or something? <laughs> no. <laughs> That's a good question. It's another show. Where's another show. Thank you, Emily. We'll talk to you very soon, okay? Sure. Thank you for gracing the show. Barbara's taking a sip of champagne and she's go. saying, hasta la vista, baby. There you go. We really detained her for a long time tonight. <laughs> uh, Switch your Thank Thanks for hanging in there, Barbara. All right. Thanks, okay. guys. Okay. I'll talk to Thank you next you. week. Okay. Thank you, Switch. Okay. I love you. <laughs> it doesn't sound like Cobra. Je, je t'aime. Okay. And so, Emily and I will be on next week, right? Y- who knows? <laughs> who knows? <laughs> yeah, no. Okay. <laughs> Never mind. Okay. Goodbye. Thank Sorry. you, Coco. <laughs> 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 well, that was, that be that was a fine. How do you do? <laughs> okay. All right, we're cutting into Merle's time. Okay, Coco. C- Merle was a great the, guest, and uh, yeah. thank you, Coco, for for, uh, for joining us. As today. always, thank you, gentlemen. There he goes, Coco. We got the movie named after him. Juan, Juan, thank you very much, You're buddy. Welcome. Pleasure all time. For, was that French? What you say? It's pleasure all okay. time. Okay. Right. Oh, we have to do plugs. <laughs> Believe yeah. it or not, we have plugs to do. Um, let's see. That's not the plug. Light. Oh, here it is. Okay. We want to plug um, uh, Wiser Time. Uh, that's the name of the CD that the bumpers, a lot of the bumpers in tonight's oh, show. Oh, uh, you know, we yeah. talked to Carmen Scafini the yeah. other night, okay? Yeah, he's looking out for us, baby. This Carmen Scalabrini or something. Yeah, the best Scafini. rock music you'll ever hear. Yep. Okay. And uh, we're going to have him on soon. So uh, thank you to him. 
Thank you, Juan Juan, and this is Mac Maloney for the whole gang. Until next week, uh, whenever you hear us next, be safe, be happy, and... Bye-bye. Right now, save 50 to 70% off at Banana Republic factory stores and online. And 60% off absolutely everything at Gap factory stores. Save even more with 40% off clearance at Gap factory stores. And at Banana Republic factory, sweaters start at $19.99 and scarves start at $9.99. Hurry! Search our store locator for your nearest Gap factory and Banana Republic factory store or shop us online.